Centuries ago, famed mathematician Katherine Johnson wrote, The whole idea of going into space was new and daring. There were no textbooks, so we had to write them. Now, the United Federation of Planets stands on a new brink of exploration and learning, yet again pushing beyond the bounds of contemporary understanding, and for a new dawn proclaim proudly once again, these are the voyages of Captain's Log. We've stopped for a routine scan of a Class IV nebula. While most of the crew is unneeded for these scans, many of the department heads have allowed for large portions of their staff to take time off for relaxation. The hollow decks and the golden dough are packed full with crew members unwinding from long weeks and months here in the Gamma Quadrant. I've elected to join them to get to know my crew better. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Voyages of. Uh, I am your GM tonight, Roxanne Thompson. Uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, this is our this is our Star Trek show, where a bunch of us, you know, sci-fi nerds get together and pretend that we're flying through space as a grand form of escapism. Uh, tonight we're playing Star Trek Adventures, which is by Modifius, and uh, we would like to remind you that. Uh, though we love the game, we are in no way affiliated nor sponsored by Modifius. We just love this world and uh, are very grateful that they have created a game that we can play and tell stories in it uh, to people like you. Um, tonight, I am joined by, uh, uh, let's start with, in the upper left corner, our ranking officer for the episode is Commander Chevrin, played by uh, Robin Jacoba. Hello. And then we have Lieutenant Commander Charlie, played by John uh, John Kennedy. Hello. Lieutenant Commander Keith Haskins, our CMO, uh, played hey. by Sean Parks. Hey, everybody. And then we have uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade. We're going to get you. We're going to get you promoted soon. But Lieutenant Junior Grade Rosrin <laughs> Irax, um, our Trill Chief of Security. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi, I'm um, Danny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, and like I said, I'm Roxanne. Um, just a few quick announcements before we get too far into the game. Um, this Thursday, we will be returning to the Illuminated Page, which is our bi-weekly Call of Cthulhu Masks of Nyarlathotep campaign, led by uh, Matt Quiet, and featuring two of the people on this stream right now. So you get to see us even more. Um, next Monday, we will have another episode. I do not remember what episode of this show will be on Monday. I don't remember the name, but we will be back in one week at 7 p.m. on Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern, um, for another episode of The Voyages of, so please come back out for that. And then on that following Thursday, we will have Growing Shadows, which will be the, it's kind of the the post the postseason stinger. There's going to be a massive group 
uh, joining us for that episode. It will feature our young ninja, but we'll also feature um, some of the game's creators and writers like Carol Darnell and Eloy Lasanta, the, the creator himself, um, playing characters in that big meeting as we wound up season two and the war is really getting going. Um, we've got to get, we had to get some more people in there for a massive round table a la Return of the Jedi. Um, so be looking forward to that in a week from Thursday um, on our Ninja show playing Ninja Crusade second edition. Um, I don't think I have any other announcements. Uh, I did not write a script for the announcements, but I think that covers just about everything. Um, we appreciate y'all coming out tonight, but let's, uh, let's play some Star Trek. So tonight you guys heard the captain's log that there has been a scan going on. Um, just one second. And, um, let's see here. Let me pull up my little notes here. Sorry guys. I'm producing and GMing. So this is, I'm just don't look behind the curtain. Okay. Um, so our, our scene starts in the science lab on the USS Serenitas. And it's a science lab that you might be familiar with if you've watched any of the previous shows. It's, uh, we're on a ship very similar to the Enterprise D. Um, but the science lab is currently quiet. But it's that thrumming sort of quiet, you know? Uh, you know the kind. It's not silent, um, but quiet. Um, it's the type of quiet that accompanies study, research, observation. Eyes are scanning readouts, and deft fingers are flying over touch screens. The lab's primary view screen is showing a dense patch of multichromatic nebular cloud. Uh, the picture shifting focus at, to different parts in turn um, as it focuses on different areas, the view screen changes. Um, an ensign stands to the side of the primary view screen, uh, tapping through various screens with one hand while tapping the nails of his other against their own teeth. Observing the view screen with his own sort of raptness is the ship's ranking uh, science officer, Lieutenant Commander Charlie. So what are you doing there, Charlie? What are you looking for in this nebular cloud? Charlie seems like he's pretty thorough. So he's probably starting the basic, like, if anything large sticks out, that will take his attention. But if nothing is like really attracting, like there's no comet, no ship asking for help, if it's all really boring then I imagine Charlie's going to be sitting there going, huh, how much dust per million is in this nebula? Ooh, <laughs> what type of radiation am I going to find? This is nice. all exciting. I can't wait to tell everyone later. <laughs> nice. Okay. Well, as as you're making these comments, the ensign still seems a little stressed out, you know, as he's just watching everything. And he says, well, uh, Commander, we're still getting a lot of interference. Um, the probe's signal is almost non-existent. And I can't determine whether or not it's collected the samples we wanted or not. Oh dear. So give me, doo -doo 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 -doo, give me an insight science role. Well, if you'd like to know what's blocking the probe from the sensors, or if you'd rather try to locate the probe, uh, insight science for determining what's blocking the probe, and reason science for what's if you want to locate it. And the ship can um, can help with that if somebody wants to roll ship sensors and science i guess i should pull up that character sheet all right so insight science then reason science yes okay hey roxy chat bought us a momentum i'm sorry the chat bought us a momentum oh okay Ooh, thank you we're gonna need that all right that's great so so two successes on the first roll Thank you for that uh, momentum. And I will yes, aid you. with the uh, ship. Uh, okay, do is... you have that sheet pulled up, Rob? Uh, I do not have it in front of me now. Okay, let me see if I can get that. I forgot. I knew I forgot something. I take that back. I do have it. So this would be a sensor sweep? Uh, yeah, I was doing ship sensors and science. Yep, so that would be a 13 is my goal. Just okay. under the bar to 12. So that would be three successes. Nice. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you you guys are... That was a difficulty, too. So you've actually generated between those roles. You've actually capped us out on momentum. Um, let's see here. So that was for the insight science, correct? Charlie? Uh, yes. Uh, that's so, two successes in the first one. 
Okay, cool. So I'm, I'll go ahead and give you the answer for that one. The probe has gone into a particularly dense patch of galactic cirrus. Um, once communication to the probe is restored, it, it does read that you are carrying a sample from the nebula. So you're able to navigate through the the nonsense and all the stuff that's and and that's blocking it, and get um, get a reading from the probe. And so go ahead and give me that reason science um, while you try to establish a location. Great. Um, I already rolled it and I got one. Oh, okay. So it's a difficulty to go ahead and roll that for the ship. Oh. Uh, Rob, sorry, I should have told you ahead of time. Oh, you're fine. That's okay. Oh, yeah, but yes. Uh, that would be a one. Hey, but you know what? That's the two that I needed. <laughs> well, that's actually oh, three. Well. That's actually three because I rolled a natural one. Oh, well, there you go. So, yeah, you guys have found it. You know exactly where it is. Um, there's a little as your as a, a combat chirps, a combat chirps. And uh, Ensign Letter informs you, Charlie, that uh, Commander, or I'm sorry, Lieutenant Hoth is, is awaiting coordinates for retrieval. Uh, Commander, I seem to have been this, um, blah. Uh, I seem to have been able to f make contact with the probe. It's very faint, but we do have coordinates. Should I transfer the coordinates of the probe so we can go and retrieve it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, awesome, awesome, Commander. Yeah, <laughs> she's a, she's been kind of waiting out there, more bored than anything, while everyone else is out having kind of a good time. Uh, Lieutenant Hoth sounds like she's like, sweet, let's get this probe and get out of here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um. Yeah, if you send those coordinates over to her, she will she will head on her way. Oh, and uh, she hey, says, I well, do. yeah, got your coordinates. Retrieving the probe now. I will beam it straight to your lab as soon as uh, we get in range. So some moments later, the probe appears on a platform there in the room, and it looks like a standard Starfleet probe. Um, uh do you approach it or do you do you let your techs kind of handle it? Are you more of a standoff or do you want to get in there and, and futz with it? Oh no. Do we have Charlie, to ask? Do we have to ask? <laughs> this is a present. Point. And Charlie <laughs> wants to unwrap his present. Yeah, I know. Nice. <laughs> nice. Um, so yeah, so you approach the probe and uh you start uh it's inside it there's a large collection repository. Um and so you, you know. It was fine when it showed up on the ship. It's been beamed here. You reason that it's safe. And you bring it out and you set it down. And there's a, um, uh, let's see, where'd my thing go? A large sealed canister is is the deposit repository, <laughs> collection repository, not, not the other, with windows that show a glittering red substance inside. Um, go ahead and give me a reason science with a difficulty of one to get more information on the substance inside the canister. Got this. Charlie's feeling good. He had a good breakfast. He is all <laughs> prepared for this. Did his workout today? <laughs> uh, three successes. One of them was crit. Nice. I'm liking okay. where we're going. This is yeah, this yeah, is this all right. good. <laughs> Keep those rolls up. You don't so, want Charlie uh, like doing security stuff, but science, he's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This this was your episode to to, to be. In. Um, initial readings show that the, the substance inside is silicon based and the composition is similar to the rest of the nebula. So no big surprises. Um, you determine that it's safe to handle outside of uh, outside of containment. There's really nothing harmful to the environment inside it. Um, the canister may be open safely. Do you want to open the canister? Hmm. Charlie's going to like double check before he opens it. Cause he is pretty careful, okay. but he um, the, do the sensors detect if it would be like anything toxic to the ship? It it isn't. It's like basic elements that uh, are not in any kind of registerable or harmful pattern that you that the ship is aware of or that you are aware of. If you'd like to, you can go ahead and roll another reason science to see if you can determine anything else about it. Um, but it looks so far, it looks safe. And with that three, I mean, you got three successes on a difficulty one. You're confident I don't, that it's not going to I don't anything. like the laugh there, though, that I just saw. Did I laugh? Well, no, you no, I'm talking about... Oh, about. oh, you laughed. La <laughs> yeah, and I was like, uh-oh. That looks like so, a old face. Yeah, uh, I rolled a 20 and okay. a 16, which is way over what I would have needed. So 
That's a huge okay. fail. <laughs> oh <laughs> well, my god! As as the complication, uh, since you rolled a complication, I'm going to go ahead and say that while you're kind of looking at it, you inadvertently, you know, in your in your haste to kind of like get a closer look at it, um, your finger accidentally triggers the opening mechanism. Thankfully, nothing nothing happens. It it looks like a gel or a really viscous liquid, um, and. But even though that's the case, it really doesn't seem to behave as such. Like, like a lab tech comes over and and you know tries to like maybe take us take a smaller sample of it. I mean, because we're talking, it's a pretty good size canister that the probe brought back, and they want to take a smaller sample of it, and it really doesn't want to separate. So it looks like a liquid. Uh, and it swirls around like it's got a liquid in it, but it really isn't. Um, further scanning, you know, with that three, I'm going to say you kind of determine that um, instead of it having like a surface tension, there's actually a protonaceous layer that surrounds um, all the good stuff inside. So it's almost like a little glob, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. It's just this weird nebular substance that uh, you've never seen before. Weird. Charlie's uh, going to grab. Hmm? Well, Charlie was going to grab just like a basic, like um, a probe, like a like a metal probe, and it's just sure. going to be like, well, while looking at it carefully and having his tricorder out, he's just going to reach in and just kind of swirl the gel a little bit. Okay, so when you try to reach in and and like submerge this metal instrument into it, that layer just kind of. Dip, dips in like you you can't get in through that protonaceous layer it's not allowing you it's really strange it's real tough like um and and as you determine but when you do that you do register on your tricorder that there there you are picking up like an electrical charge and uh you you surmise that perhaps that's what's helping with this cohesion um and because it, it's holding together really really well it does not want to be poked at um, it doesn't seem to be responding in any way. It just, you can't pierce it. <laughs> well, Charlie's going to... Oh, I'll go, go ahead. ahead. I was going to say, about about this time, your uh, combat chirps again. And uh, you recognize the voice of uh, Captain Threx. Uh, Commander? Uh, Lieutenant Commander Charlie here. Um, I... I seem to recall asking all the senior staff to meet me in the dough for a drink, and by my quick scanning, I see almost no one from your team. The lab can handle itself for an hour, uh, Lieutenant Commander. Uh, come on down. Well, I, I just assumed you would have wanted the results from this probe as soon as possible, and, you know, with we almost lost the probe, and... Uh, uh, you know, but I, I, I was... Oh, go ahead. But uh, I'll be right there. Yeah, the lab is going to be fine. And you notice uh, as, as you, you know, uh, your staff hears this, Ensign Letter looks kind of hopeful that maybe they're going to get to go to the to get some drinks too. Um, <laughs> but the captain pipes in and says, oh, I'm sure Ensign Letter will save all the data for you when you get back. Um, and we can talk about it later. <laughs> um, and the Ensign, Ensign Letter's is like, oh. Yeah, he, he visibly <laughs> deflates. He's falling down. Um, <laughs> But everybody else, like, whoo, they they just step away from their consoles. You pop the lid back on that containment thing, and and everybody else books it before somebody changes their mind. Um, <laughs> and so so you head on down to the dough. I do. All right. Well, when the lab is empty except for Ensign Letter, um, he's sitting on a stool, kind of going through some more screens. Still looks super bummed. Kind of twirls around a little bit. Um, and then his combat chirps, and it's an ensign from the USS Binary, which you know is our is the second uh, Starfleet ship in this quadrant. They've been helping with the scans at this at this point. Um, but so he starts talking to this ensign from the Binary, going over some of the data that they've also collected. And behind them, that containment that containment uh, canister kind of does a little wobble, and then the camera goes to black. And so we're going to lose the momentum as we go to the dough. Um, but you're still at five. You guys are doing fine. Um, and so, yeah, you guys get down the dappled dough for those of you who haven't watched our show before or um, aren't familiar with it. Um, Cause we don't mention it a ton. I don't think we've been back since like episode two. 
um, it's it's essentially ten forward. It's and it's actually uh, the forward parts of decks nine and ten, and it's like a a gathering place. Uh, a, I don't want to say bar, but it's kind of a bar. It's <laughs> kind of the the recreational hall, if you will. Um, and gathered around the table on the upper observation deck of the Dappled Doe, you have Captain Threx's table where he's got his staff gathered around him. Commander Garahar, um, the uh, chief of ops, is laughing jovially, probably at a joke that uh, he is told. Um, <laughs> and a few smile politely. There's a few laughs happening too. And then there's some, of course, rolling their eyes. Um, so at this table, there will be Commander Chevrin and... Uh, Lieutenant Commander Haskins, and then, of course, Lieutenant Junior Grade Rosarin Irax. And how do you guys respond to uh, Commander Garahar's uh, attempts, at, attempts at entertainment? Deep sigh. <laughs> uh, I will uh, chuckle politely. Yeah, yeah, Rosarin's kind of of the same, you know. He's, you know, he, he's kind of friendly with, with talks pretty well. So he tries to put forth an effort. Uh, but as soon as Tox turns away, it kind of, you know, dies down a little bit. It's like, ah, <laughs> you know, and then Tox turns away and he's like. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, for, for what it's worth, Halata seems, uh, seems to have found some humor in it. And, and Tox is having a good time and he doesn't really notice. He doesn't care if you laugh or not. He's going to keep telling jokes. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I'm going to say that the three of you, uh, besides Charlie, cause Charlie is the latest arrival to the table. Um, I'm going to say the three of you have been sitting here chatting with the captain for quite a while. What have you guys been doing while the, while the ship is doing these scans? Uh, Chevrin has mostly been sort of observing the crew, but, you know, talking to a couple of the, uh, people that he's been working with recently, um, yeah, I'm just sort of congratulating people on jobs well done. Nice, nice. I would have taken the, the downtime to finish filing off reports from the casualties and injury lists from the last away mission, um, making sure that uh, Rosrin is doing okay, that she's, you know, when she sat down, I would have made sure that she's doing he. what I told her to do to recover. He, sorry, he. sorry, sorry. Making sure that he is doing good to, you know, doing his physical therapy. Mm. Oh, man, I got physical therapy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, you said you wanted to be able to, you know, uh, stay limber and not get stiff from your injuries. And you did yeah. get yeeted across the bridge. <laughs> I, That's I, true. Yes. This is it true. strategically tore your shirt. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh as for Rosrin, he's he's not drinking. He's he's not a drinker. So if there are drinks going on, he is he is not doing that. And you know, anyone who converses with him, he will he will converse with. But he's not, you know, an overly jovial person. Like talks, you know. So it's, you know, he he's there and he's trying to participate. But but it's pretty obvious he has not uh, done this sort of thing a lot. <laughs> Um, so, sure. you know, it, it's, it's very, you know, like, you know, awkward kind of like looking around and, and, you know, someone talks to him, you know, oh, oh yeah. You know, and he'll, you know, answer whatever question or whatever, but yeah, that's, that's how he's been handling it. And, okay. uh, yeah, as for downtime, uh, he's probably just making sure the security doing their drills and things like that. After what happened last time, he's like, okay, <laughs> we need to, uh, to be prepared <laughs> and uh sure. and yeah the tuck into a room awesome. get thrown across the room <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know um we i don't know how often how much time y'all have gotten to spend in the dappled doe up till now um uh, but it's it's definitely nice to not have to be really worrying about a whole lot at the moment you're not getting sent out on an away mission you're just kind of doing your normal shift stuff, you've kind of fallen into that normal routine of being a Starfleet officer on a starship out exploring the far reaches of our galaxy. Um, as the captain sits there, he looks at Charlie and says, hey, was there anything interesting in the scans yet? Uh, you said you lost a probe, but uh, you did get it back? Yes. Um, by modulating our sensors, we managed to pick up on this, the probe's trail. 
And I'm glad we brought it back. It had a very interesting substance inside of it. I was just about to begin some tests. It seems oh. to be a gel-like substance that generates... He just keeps steamrolling, by the way. Charlie <laughs> yeah, just keeps that's going. <laughs> and um, and Thre Threx is just like, okay. And about that time, you guys get interrupted because uh, Threx's combat chirps as well as Irax's or Irax's and, and yours, Charlie. And... Uh, his uh, security officer actually comes on and says, Captain, uh, there's been a security breach on deck 12 in the science lab, but the subject's detained. Um, and the captain kind of looks and uh, says, well, I, I'm on my way. And with a look at the doctor and Chevrin and Halada, he, in turn, he adds, prepare your staff doctor uh, just in case. Uh, and Chevrin okay. with me, Halada, check in with the binary and let Marzon know. Mm. Uh, Marzon Hi, is the captain of the binary. Um, yeah, Rosrin will get up as well, and uh, yeah, and he you wants know, he wants the three the three of you to well the two of you to come and Charlie. You know, let's all let's go down to the let's go down to the lab. Uh, Charlie looks a little mortified, which is hard to tell because he's a reptilian. But Charlie is probably <laughs> like, "Oh no, what did I do wrong?" Yeah. yeah um, as, as you're walking down there, you know, there is, I'm sure there's some idle chatter, or not even idle, but the captain's like, how do we get a security breach on the deck? And, you know, he's he's like throwing questions out to, to all three of you, like, how could someone get into the science lab without us being aware? You know, there were no unauthorized transports. What What's going on here? So there's a lot of chatter happening as you guys make your way down to deck 12. Um, thankfully, it's not too far. Um, and as you arrive at the science lab, uh, the door opens and Ensign Letter is being let out by uh, a nurse Rixla. She's an Afrosian. And Letter looks visibly flushed and sweating and not only shaken, but but clearly shaking. Um, and the nurse just kind of looks at, at the, do at, uh, I'm sorry, at the captain and, he sa and she says, uh, I'm just taking him to sickbay, Captain, and doesn't stop, just <laughs> keeps going. She seems pretty, pretty to the point. Matter of fact, only business mode. Um, and the captain takes note and leads the the two of you, um, or I'm sorry, the three of you into to the uh, to the uh, through the door, and where you find uh, two security officers flanking a third individual. Um, and th that third individual looks absolutely unbothered and completely complacent, um, even kindly, if you had to if you had to guess. Kind of a soft smile, looks humanoid in that they have a head and shoulders and arms and legs. Um, and uh, his skin is uh, a glistening pinkish uh, buff with silvery hair that moves as though it's caught in a light breeze. Uh, they were, <laughs> and you, you, it's not the last thing you note, but uh, they are clearly and absolutely completely nude. Um, <laughs> And uh, if anyone can look beyond that, they would notice that this individual's eyes are each a dip, deeply rich and swirling red color. Hmm. Um, if you can, Charlie, go ahead and give me an insight science roll with a difficulty one. And chat bought you a threat, Roxy. Bought me a threat? Yep. I am also assuming that this species is not one that normally walks around naked. Hey, chat. Um, What's up with that? <laughs> you're not sure what um what species it is it's just that it's humanoid and and i i used a he him pronoun but i there's really no indication of that except for you know just visibly no no breasts but there's also no reproductive organs that you can see it's like a, a naked ken doll or barbie yeah i guess more more ken doll if there's no yeah yeah alan rickman in uh in dogma Metatron, yeah. Uh, two successes. Okay, fantastic. Um, I'm going to bring that momentum back. Um, so you, Charlie, note uh, very quickly that the deep and swirling red of his eyes looks exactly like the substance that was in the canister. And uh, you look past him and you can see that the canister is laying on its side on the ground and open. Commander, it, clearly this individual was not was not here when I left. Uh, 
are you talking to the captain or captain sorry yeah captain yeah that's right um i mean i believe you i've i i don't you know the captain is just kind of watching this all very interesting you know is very confused how how did you get on the ship or how you know he wants more information and the security officers that are flanking him there's uh the ranking security officer actually steps forward and says uh captain lieutenant um they so he looks at irax or irax and says uh lieutenant <laughs> they haven't resisted and have showed no signs of hostility we're not sure how they boarded the ship their answers are kind of cryptic um ensign letter was unconscious when we arrived and was very scattered when we tried to speak with him hmm. have they said anything yeah Oswin looks over at the captain Would you um, like to try speaking to him, Captain, or sh or them, Captain, or should I? Um, the captain, the captain thinks for a minute and is just kind of looking at this this nude being and is is, is kind of flummoxed. You know, is trying to keep uh, an okay, you know, a, a professional demeanor, but you know, seemingly uncomfortable. Um, mm. This is and Captain or the captain looks at the security officers and, and he asks the same question. Have they given a name? And uh, when he asks this, the intruder moves a little bit so he can make eyes uh, at the captain over the shoulder of the security officer and says, uh, I have no name, uh, as you say, Denobulin, but uh, hello all the same. And the captain steps forward and says, my name is Krenfell Threx, captain of the Serenitis. How did you come to be aboard my ship? And the, the individual smiles and shrugs a little bit and says, I merely accepted the invitation. Your craft came and I boarded it. Invitation? <sighs> ship arrived in my, uh, you know, it, it came to where I live and it was you know, accepting of input, and I input. Oh, did you bring up change the board? You're not there, I Doctor. I have no idea. Oh, I thought I was. You said the three. Sorry. Oh, I'm you sorry. I was having that. you prepare your staff. You can be there cool. if you'd like. No, no. I'll be in the I'll be in the medical bay. Okay. I'm just going to grab, like, a tricorder and just conduct a scan. Pretty obvious okay. he's doing it, too. There's no low-key, like, you know... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and for all, uh, as far as it seems, uh, the individual is like, okay, fine. <laughs> he just he doesn't he doesn't say anything. He just kind of looks uh, wistfully about at everyone. Um, mm -hmm. If anyone would like, uh, you can, uh, you know, the captain. Well, the captain looks at Charlie, and he was like, could he be referring to the probe? That's it's my suspicion, captain, that. as well. It is the only uh, vessel that we've had out. Yeah, bes yeah. Besides the the shuttlecraft that uh, Lieutenant Hoth was was flying to retrieve the probe, I know of. She would have said something, I'm sure, if if, if this individual and he kind of looks at looks at nameless. We're just going to call him nameless for the time being, and uh, says. Uh, um, I, you'll have to pardon us. We're not used to guests arriving in this manner. Mm. Um, go ahead and do a, since you're running a scan on him, go ahead and do an insight science role there, Charlie. Um, if somebody wants to do the ships, you can do this uh, difficulty two. ship sensors. Uh, again, will just be ship sensors and science. Two successes. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Um, were you rolling for the ship, Rob? I can, yeah. Sorry. Almost fine. Same one. Same same roll. Oh, uh, one success at 11. Okay, fantastic. So, um, as you're making this scan, uh, you, you find the exact same things that you scanned in the, uh, of the, of the liquid previous. It's silicon based. There's a slight electrical charge that seems to be holding it all together. Um, and you would be willing to bet that if you poked it, 
it would act in much the same way as the liquid did before. I would I would assume that you're not interested in poking him with a metal instrument, though. Or at least thinking it, but no. <laughs> okay, <yeah. laughs> I Buy him a drink first. <laughs> um, go ahead, um, anyone that's in the room, go ahead and make an insight, uh, another insight science roll. Not helped by the ship. This is purely... Uh, so each of us can make that? Yes. Uh, two successes. Okay, fantastic. One. Just one for, for Rosrin? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did, okay, and then so on... Uh, on a one, Rosrin, you notice that you're kind of keeping an eye on your officers, too. Because, mm -hmm. uh, again, two of your officers are in there. Um, one of them seems, the one that hasn't spoken yet, you feel that he seems a little embarrassed by the intruder's state of undress. Um, and you think Nameless seems fairly friendly. Uh, again, mm -hmm. they're not making any... They clearly have no weapons, at least as far as you can tell, in their naked state that you don't know where they'd be hiding one. Um, but, uh, and then for the the two successes, uh, Chevrin, you notice that the, the security officer that hasn't spoken yet, their forehead is also glistening and cheeks flushed, and they're looking a touch faint. Um, and again, further as you have you as you've studied this this in individual, this intruder, he not only seems friendly, but he's really not even given any red flags, except that they appeared unexpectedly and by really an unknown means. So, uh, so far, he's just chilling there. Um, about this time, the door opens, and another security <laughs> another security officer comes in and just hands uh, nameless a a like a robe, hands him a little bundle of clothes. And which mm -hmm. he puts on without without argument. Um, um, and um, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to. Um, I'm just going to assume it's Minkler is the one that is a little sweaty. Sure, sure. And um, sure. Be, because oh, it, Minkler. Not because Minkler. everything is you know seems to be kosher. Uh, Chevrin will basically. Um, Minkler, why don't you go down to Medical Bay? You seem to be a little. Under the weather. Uh, Does Rosalyn see it now that he got pointed out? Like when, yeah. when Sharon yeah. says, oh, okay, yeah. Hmm. And he he says, uh, the lab is always a bit warm this shift anyway, but uh, but I will happily go. And he, he said, yes, Commander. And he, he departs, um, taking his area of effect phaser with him. And mm -hmm. <laughs> um, no, so... Uh, the captain at this point uh, instructs quite plainly. He's like, okay, Erex, I want, I want him taken to the brig. Um, and at this point, Nameless kind of frowns. And, and he says, is that any way to treat a visiting diplomat? I mean, I've heard of Starfleet before. Don't you have some sort of first contact protocol? And... Uh -huh. uh, Eric would definitely know that because he has specialty in protocol. Yeah. So, uh, could we make rolls to know that? Because I also have sure. Starfleet protocol. Sure. Yeah. Please do. Um, reason command, maybe, or insight command. Yeah, that works. Difficulty. I'm going to give you since you guys both have focuses in it. Let's just go for a difficulty one. I got one actually, so that's good. Uh, I got one. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, you're not entirely sure why uh, he's he's asking for this, um, but you do know that we do have first contact protocol, and mm -hmm. it doesn't usually involve sending your visitor to the brig. <laughs> um, but uh, you're like, you know, maybe we should bring in, you know, the ambassador, or um, uh, maybe take him to sick bay, you know, just to get a scan, just to you know, let's start slow, let's go to sick bay. Yeah. Let's understand a little bit more about you. You can understand a little bit more about us, but so, let's go somewhere. That's not the yeah. science lab. Uh, so Shabrin will say, uh, so who's, who's saying that? Who's, who's oh, no, that's, 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 that's just the information the, we got. That's just the information. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. That's uh, just the info. Okay. Yeah. Shabrin will say captain, uh, if I may, please. Um, 
we have a visitor, albeit a strange one, but maybe we should uh, take him to medical to check out and make sure everything is all right with him after the voyage, and then possibly set him in one of the quarters, possibly with uh, one member of our security with him just to make sure that everything stays on the up and up, and if he needs anything, he has someone to contact. I'm in agreement with uh, Commander I, Chivrin here. Yeah, I I I agree as well. Um, so yes, um, Lieutenant Irax, please escort our guest to medical. Um, you can accompany Chivrin if you'd like. Um, in okay. fact, please do. I would like you to stay with them. Um, I'm going to go to my ready room and talk to Commander Cooper. Um, keep me posted if anything changes. Yes, yes, Hi, Captain. Captain. And I will also turn to the bean. Um, I do apologize for our rash actions. Um, we have been recently, we are newly formed to the times of peace, so we may have swift and harsh reactions, but you have my sincerest apologies. Oh, this is fine. This is fine. I will happily submit to whatever scans you, you have for me. Um, let's go. And he tightens, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he kind of affixes the robe a little better and um, he seems to realize that maybe being nude is not necessarily common, but uh, he will he happily follows um, as we're all dressed <laughs> not nude yeah, everybody else is dressed uh, Chevrin, uh, Chevrin will also be referring to the creature as a mix which is a gender neutral honorific okay, mm. that works that works for me, mix um, so um, oh go ahead where, where are we taking them to do additional scans? Are we going to do that here in the science lab or somewhere else? Uh, We're going to medical. go to medical. We're going to go sick bay. Oh. Okay, thank you. But, and, um, you're, and, you're, and Charlie is welcome to come too. Yeah. Uh, I was you know, going we, to... Oh, he's coming. He's walking along. He's still scanning. <laughs> <laughs> he's still scanning as you go. <laughs> uh, as um. as Shivrin <laughs> noticed that, um, Lieutenant Commander, why don't you come with us? Because of your experience with the probe. Mm. Love to. All and right. I've already taken all the data and I'm dividing it into sub files on the tricorder. I just figured it'd be polite to invite nice. them along. <laughs> yes, yes, no. This is, yeah. uh, the the captain has already departed. He's like, I've got to go <laughs> to deal. And he wants to talk to Marzon as well. Um and so the the four of you with uh your new friend, uh nameless, head down to sick bay. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and lose a momentum. We're going to call this a new scene. I'm going to say, mm -hmm. uh, with its smooth, dull gray walls, sick bay always feels sterile and calm. And even though the doctor had prepared for a potential catastrophe, because we had an intruder on, on board the ship, um, it really was mostly empty besides Lieutenant Minkler. Um, and then there's another, another uh, ops lieutenant that's on one of the tables getting a, he's got like a, a scratch on his a bleeding bump on his forehead that uh, Nurse Rixla is handling, um, and so uh, when the escort, when the entourage enters, Nameless smiles broadly and takes in the side of a quiet sick bay, and he sees Nurse Rixla and he says, "Oh, kind nurse, it's so good to see you again." Um, and he holds out his hands in an offer to uh, to shake hers, but uh, she does not reciprocate. Uh, she's a little busy. But she finishes the patch and arches an eyebrow at him and says, well, I had a feeling you'd end up here sooner or later. Um, I see they didn't rough you up. And Nameless, he says, oh, no, no, not at all. May I sit here? And without waiting for an answer, he hops up on one of the tables and just mm -hmm. kind of sits there swinging his legs. Mm -hmm. um, very unconcerned, happy mm -hmm. to be here. Um, in fact, he looks over at uh, his neighbor, which is not Minkler, but the, the ops lieutenant, and he holds out a hand and he says, I don't have a name, but uh, I'm new here. <laughs> and, and the ops lieutenant kind of makes a face, but quickly shakes his hand and uh, slides off the table. And he's like, can I, can I get back to the dough? I was in the middle of something. And uh, Nurse Rixla smiles and she, she's like, yeah, yeah. And she follows him to the door and she reading, she's reciting a litany of ways to not fall while you're dancing. Um, in a ship mm -hmm. that doesn't serve legitimate alcohol. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, but at this point, I assume Dr. Dr. Haskins approaches and 
is uh is wants to see what's going on so what's key doing so we had the one of charlie's scientists up here too along with minkler yes uh okay. we had one we had ensign letter in there earlier and uh um, he is not here right now. Uh, okay. Rixla actually gave him some water and a quick scan. He seemed fine, sent them on his way. Okay. So I would have been scanning Minkler, probably giving him a hard time for being back to the sick bay again. Because it seems <laughs> like he's here at least every other day. Uh, when they would have all walked in and Nameless jumped up on one of the beds, I would have been like, where did they come from? Was that that a... is a very good question, Commander. I thought the probe's not big enough for a being of that size. Reed, it's remarkable. We are still doing research into that, and we're hoping that um, along with making sure everything is in order, that you might be able to help us with that. Is, is it a changeling? From our scans, have we been able to determine is it a changeling? It is not a changeling. And when when uh, Nameless overhears that, he's like, uh, I am not one of those, but I understand why you might think so. I have encountered them, and they are the worst people to ever have to deal with. Um, I am not, I am not that, uh, I, I don't necessarily know what I am. I just know that I have been experiencing the universe for a very long time and I have been having a great time and the changeling and their dominion, they, ugh, boring. So, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming you want some medical scans done? Oh, uh, yes, please. Uh, full... Bevy of tests. Over. I'm going to walk over to Nameless. I'm going to be like, uh, what do we call you? Uh, well, I again, I don't have a name. Um, so, I mean, whatever you'd like is fine. Uh, Commander? Any suggestions? I on don't, our... Commander. It's a little too formal. No, no, not you. <laughs> Commander Chagrin. Yeah. Any suggestions on a name? Anybody? Just, just call me, just call me nameless. It's fine. Okay. So <laughs> they're asking. To I'll nameless. come up with a name for myself later. I don't. I've never been asked. Well, that's that's <laughs> sad. Uh, my name is. Dr. Haskins, um, if you're all right with it, I'm going to perform some scans. They sh should cause nice no to discomfort. Nice to meet you, Dr. Haskins. And he holds hand. out his hand. Yeah, I want to be okay. dumb. Shake his hand. <laughs> um, the scans we're going to do, they're, they're, they're painless. We're just going to try to see if we can pinpoint your origins. Maybe we've encountered your species before. Are there others out there like you? That would be wonderful. Um... I, there are others like me, but also not like me. I have had children um, before, but they have spread far to the ends of the galaxy. I, I couldn't even begin to, uh -huh. to know where they all are. We used to communicate, but haven't in some time. And they never, they weren't able to, to put on this form. I've been around enough now that I've learned how to mimic this form. Well, you're, you're doing remarkably well. Oh, can you mimic, can you mimic any form? Um, I can, and he kind of changes his features to, uh, it, it's still definitely, uh, has, it's that, it's that like his skin tone never changes, but he can like, he kind of looks at Dr. Haskins a little bit and he's like, he kind of scrunches up his face and he's able to form, We lost your sound, Rock. Is you an off, Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What? We lost your sound. We lost your sound. Yeah, we lost you for oh, a second. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Um, but yeah, he scrunches up his face, forms some brow ridges. Um, again, he still looks very much that same pinkish color with the, with the deep swirling red eyes, the eyes never change and the hair still kind of swirls as though it's caught in water or something. Um, but so he can't, again, not like a changeling can, can exactly mimic a person and his voice constantly stays the same. It's just like, he's a little bit liquidy and can form it in another place and do other things with it. So I will start a scan with the medical tricorder. All right, so give me some, give me some uh, insight or reason, insight or reason uh, with medical. I'll do Difficulty reason, two. I'll do reason and medical, and one of my focuses is xenobiology. Fantastic, that would be great. So difficulty of two. Uh, that yes. is two successes. Okay. Um, you don't see anything out of, you know, I don't want to say out, nothing out of the ordinary. He's obviously not human. He's obviously not registering as any other species that you've been, uh, that, that Starfleet has interacted with uh, before, um, which is odd because he's heard of Starfleet. So that's a little weird, um, but he's come like, again, you're not coming up with anything specifically toxic or any kind of toxic combination of things. Um, you're reading that he's a silicon based life form and uh, he's just kind of fascinating. Like you, you really want to spend more time studying this because this, this is first contact with this being that no one else in Starfleet has ever recorded meeting before, but so, so far, nothing dangerous. That well, not only dangerous, but like, so there is, I mean, he is liquid composition. There's like no skeletal structure when he changes shape. Right, no skeletal structure. Um, does his mask remain? I'm going to ask him to, Nameless, if, if you can, can you turn into the form when we first found you? Oh, sure. That is my native form. And he, oh, that is your native uh, form. Okay. Yeah, just and for, he, he goes, for a minute. <laughs> and gels right, out. Skip. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a scan. Is the mass consistent between the two forms? Uh, not really. I, I mean, it, it is, but it isn't. The, the liquid does seem like there wouldn't have been enough to make right. this human shape, but you've seen weirder things. Like, right. it would right. fit right. in a, in like a standard uh, bucket size. I mean, we didn't bring the canister, I don't think, but, you know... Charlie could show you the canister that he came in. I mean, like, this is what he arrived in. Oh, that, oh Charlie the, is helping the doctor and sharing yeah. his notes with the doctor. It kind of okay. whispered back and forth and like mass to mass ratios and all that. Sure. Uh, oh, name uh, you, you can, if you can, can you hear me, I'm assuming you can hear me. Go ahead and you can come back to a form to communicate with us. Yeah, his, uh, like a head pops out first and he's like, oh, okay. And he, he becomes whole again. Um, you hear the door open behind you, and uh, in walks uh, Commander Cooper, the ship's counselor and ambassador. And uh, he just kind of strolls up and he says, I uh, uh, hope I'm not interrupting too much, uh, but the captain asked me to come down, and uh, I am uh, an ambassador, and uh, I would like to maybe spend some time with our guest and uh, determine... Uh, if as soon as you're done here, uh, if uh, your scans don't have a reason to necessarily keep him here, uh, would like to start dealing with uh, first contact uh, procedures. Um, I think we're. I think we've got uh, between uh, Commander Charlie and myself. I think we've got enough scans to continue to research without him here. So yeah, if you want to take him to. Initiate first contact, yeah, by all means. Uh, as far as I can tell from the scans, the, there, he's, there's no radiation, there's no toxicity that I can tell, at least with the scans so far, and sure. we've all been in this presence for a while. I don't, we've had no ill effects so far. Sure, okay. Um, well, that would be that would be fantastic if I could uh, 
we've got some quarters set up for, for you. He turns the nameless. He's like, we have quarters for you. Um, we can even get you more clothes if you'd like. Um, just to help with uh, per, uh, appearances, you know, and, and protocol. It, it just, some people get a little uncomfortable when people are naked, but, um, you know, that's, if that's your custom, that's what we did. And he, and Zeke is just rattling on a bunch of very diplomatic uh, off you. the table and he's like, uh, yeah, no, this sounds great. And he looks back, he says, don't go far. And, uh, he kind of, uh, he flashes a grin at everyone and, uh, Zeke kind of looks back and he says, I think it would be good if you came with us, uh, Lieutenant, uh, just, just in case I don't. And, uh, the captain, the captain agrees that you should, you should join us. Of course. So, um, the three of them leave. And mm -hmm. then as, as they leave and leave, you know, Charlie and Keed and Chevrin in the, in the, um, uh, in sick bay, um, I'm going to say, Chevrin, you start to notice that you are feeling a little warm. All right. Um, he's an Andorian, so it's probably not unheard of for him to be a little warm. Right, right. You're used to much yeah. colder climbs anyway. Um, and then, Charlie, you are also feeling warm. Um, Keed, if you were dealing with uh, Stan, Stan is still there. He's continuing to, you know, he's like pouring sweat now and flushed and uh, getting clearly agitated. And he's like, can I, can I get out of here? You guys are keeping, you guys keep this, the sick bay way too warm for me. It's, no, it's, it's not too warm. It's the standard temperature throughout the ship. It, uh, no, no, something's, something's going on. And he's kind of, he's kind of itching a little bit and he's, he's itching his palms and he's like, "Can I? Can I just go to my quarters or go get a drink?" I no, not not, not yet. I'm gonna walk over and scan him to see if he's running a temperature and see if there's um, anything abnormal going on. He's got a slight fever. Oh. Um, you wouldn't think it's high enough to cause this sort of a reaction, but he's clearly in discomfort. Like his cheeks are flushed, and he's getting. He is. He's like. He's like. Come on, I. I just probably need to sleep something off. I'm just not feeling very good. What do you need to sleep off? Of? What were you doing while you were on duty that you need to sleep off? I, I'm just, I'm just don't feel good. I don't know. I, I, I didn't do anything. I just got call. You know, everybody else is getting to have fun down in the the dough, and I have to. I'm getting called to pick up some guy that breaks into the science. Like, why even break into the science lab? What is um, what is one corner? Is he an ensign? <laughs> is he a lieutenant? I believe he was a lieutenant. Yeah, I he is. I remember. Would you start yeah. Maybe. Would you... Lieutenant, you need to stop right now. If you're not feeling well, you're not going to get any better in your quarters. You need to let me do my job. He he begrudgingly accepts this. You do outrank him, and uh, you are the doctor. And as chief medical officer, you outrank a lot of people um, and can tell him very, very swiftly that he needs. So you set him up uh, to just kind of spend some time in the sick bay while you continue to monitor. Uh, I'm going to lower the temperature a couple of degrees to see if you make him a little more comfortable. All right. No, it's a shame. I that? thought it was. <laughs> oh, go ahead. I thought it was nice in here. You <laughs> always keep it way too warm. <laughs> Way too warm, Commander. Way too warm. <laughs> uh, Chevrin will move to Minkler. Lieutenant, this really is for the best. And remember, you're a Federation officer, and I expect you, can, you, expect you to conduct yourself as one. Yes, sir. My apologies. It's a good man. I'm sure I will be fine. I just don't feel good. Trust in the doctor, and he'll kind of clamp, clap him on the shoulder. I'm gonna and walk back to. I'm gonna get a hypospray relief uh, with a dose of dilivid, di, uh, dilivid. I'm gonna say dilated. Okay. No, not dilated. 
<laughs> no, this Knock is a, out. <laughs> and I'm gonna before I do that, I'm gonna like, all right, Nicola, this is a antitoxin. So if you were exposed to something and it's making you feel bad, this should work in a couple of minutes. Then I'm gonna just press it to his neck and we're gonna hear the classic pss. Okay. Do you think I was exposed to something? Like was that you scanned that guy? Did he expose me to something? Besides like all of him? Did he did he expose me to something toxic? <laughs> Minkler was clearly upset by his state of undress. That that was that was a thing that he was not pleased with. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like twelve. Sorry. Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I don't I don't know that he exposed you to anything, but you know, our scan showed that he was there wasn't anything wrong. However, you were in the lab with a probe. There could have been something on the outside of the probe that is causing <sighs> this reaction that you're feeling. Because it, it's presenting yourself like a slight flu, maybe some kind of allergy reaction, because you keep scratching at yourself. Uh so that yeah. recommendation, by the way, Charlie's gonna interject. And Charlie's gonna be like, we did a scan of the probe. We did not encounter any microbes. To my knowledge, there was nothing attached to the probe. You also didn't know that there was a life form in the probe. You see a bit of a hissing noise coming from Charlie? (laughs) (laughs) You haven't confirmed that the life form was in the probe. (laughs) Um, Yeah, Minkler, Minkler lays back and continues to sweat, but he... He he looks concerned, um, but also just again agitated. He just looks dis- like he's just uncomfortable. You know, he's itchy. It's hot. Um, he's getting a little red uh, in the cheeks, and uh, but he he obeys uh, orders and he he lays down and and he's like just hopefully it kicks in fast. Let me skip. Give it a minute. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull Chagrin and Charlie off to the side a little bit and I'm like this be like I don't honestly I don't know what's going on the scans don't show anything but his reaction there's something there's something attacking him and he's that's Minkler is usually Minkler's in here a lot and he's usually not that agitated and he's very cooperative. Uh is it uh, possible go ahead. I was just going to ask the uh, GM, is it possible to roll to see if Charlie is experiencing some discomfort as well? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and do an insight, I guess, science. I guess that's the, is that, to me, is the the general, like, observation role? Um, you uh, might insight, be able to use yeah. security, too. Um, um, yeah, I've... Insight security, maybe, if you're just familiar with more security and you're looking for anything but i would say yeah. science or medical yeah, i know that he had mentioned that he was feeling warm which chavrindos is crew and that seems weird okay um that would be one success okay that's fine um you know i'm i'll be honest how how would you know, a fever appear on a reptilian species. Um, I, that's, a, that's a thing that I'm not super familiar with, but would, would the skin flush in a way? So I've thought about this, and um, being a little bit more warm-blooded, I think that Saurians, you know, unless you're scanning them, you wouldn't be able to tell if like, their body temperature was higher, but you would definitely tell that Charlie's, like, his scales, like his coloration slightly off. Uh, maybe he's even got like a little bit of red on his cheeks, which is green skin, so that's pretty weird. But also, Charlie's just kind of acting like not prim and proper at the moment. He's not like lounging around, but he's just very much just like yeah. kind of walking around. He's poking at the tricorder, trying to get it to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not and, doing and, what I want it to uh, do. And Sorkin wouldn't sweat either, correct? No. Yeah. Yeah. So. So yeah, so you'll you'll be able to tell that something's not quite right. Like mm-hmm. there is a slight his normal coloring is off um and he does seem agitated and you've not really witnessed Charlie get get agitated. Yeah. Maybe agitated is not the right word, but he he seems very focused on finding out what's going on. Um and understandably so, someone appeared in his science lab. Um 
but you know, you don't see anything telltale about, and he hasn't complained of anything per se. Mm. Um, Lieutenant Commander, I can't help but notice that you are a bit flushed, might not be the right word, but are, are you feeling yourself? You may be exhibiting similar symptoms to uh, Lieutenant Minkler. That doesn't seem like. I feel fine. I mean, it, it feels comfortable in here, which, you know, is a first, because normally this ship's really cold. But no, it's a, I feel fine. It's just the tricorder, you know, keep telling them, I've not everybody on this ship has little, what are they called, the, the nubs that everyone else has. But it's at that that he kind of looks at the tricorder, and he kind of cocks his head to the side. And then he just kind of looks up at you, and he's like, I think something's wrong. I think something is very wrong. While, while Charlie's ranting like that, uh, Chevrin will slowly look at uh, Commander Haskins. I raise my eyebrow, walk towards Charlie, and start scanning him. Mm-hmm. All right. And while I'm while I'm scanning him, I was like, "You you want to do you want to lay down on the bed? This might go easier." I. Don't you see Charlie like he looks Charlie wants to disagree with you, you can tell he does, but at the same time he's getting on the bed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. And I'm gonna scan to see if there's anything to see. Sure. Give me a reason medical. Difficulty one. Uh, that is uh, two criticals. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Because my focus um, in xenobiology, I rolled under five for medical on both. Fantastic. Nice. Um, yeah, he's definitely running uh, a fever for Saurians, uh, and he's. Uh, it's not again. It's a mild fever, um, and his blood pressure is is elevated for him, um, and so you can tell. Like now that you've seen Minkler. And you saw Ensign Letter, although you may not have worked directly with Ensign Letter, but, but, you know, you remember some of what Rixla was saying while he was in, in sickbay. Um, you've seen Minkler and now you've looked at the symptoms here and, and you, you know, you can, you're determining, you're, you're kind of seeing a pattern here. Um, something is definitely happening, but you can't pinpoint exactly what it is. You just see the symptoms. In Commander Charlie, you said that it's comfortable in here for you? Yes. You do remember that I lowered the temperature by like three degrees to make Minkler a little more comfortable. So this should be colder to you in here now. Honestly, this I feel fine. I I'm not certain. If my body temperature increased. You see Charlie's brain trying to... You see wheels are turning, (laughs) but you're starting to see that the wheels aren't turning that well. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Commander. I... And he starts to start hissing in the automatic, and his translator's picking it up. I feel funny. Mm -hmm. Commander Shiren, I think we have a problem. And I don't know what it is. Agreed. Um, we should let the captain we, know, make sure yes. that he and um, and that Lieutenant Rosarin are feeling okay. I need we need to know how they're feeling right now. Yes, um, I will get them on the comm. I would like you to finish with uh, Lieutenant Commander Charlie, and then scan yourself as well. Make sure everything is all right. And I will. So Shavrin so, will take a couple. Sp- Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, Chevrin will take a couple steps over and um, a tap on the comm badge, but this might be a good place to yep. pick that yep, up. We're gonna, yep, we're going to switch over to uh, Lieutenant Irax uh, as, as he escorts our guest mm-hmm. and uh, Commander Cooper down to mm-hmm. the guest quarters that have been prepared for uh for nameless uh as yet nameless um mm-hmm. 
he continues to be very jovial, very friendly, very kind of almost gregarious. Um, he kind of talks about the wonders of space and, and, and you know, you over here, uh, I, I assume Rosrin is kind of very still in business mode. Like this is, Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So Until not- he's absolutely certain, for sure. But he's also interested in this conversation because he's also very eager to hear about things. So if this guy's sure. talking about, like, if this if this being is talking about the wonders of space, then, you know, he would definitely sure. be listening. But he's also still, yeah, very much in, you know, business. Okay, we have a task now. We need to make sure that this is happening and everyone's safe, yeah. et cetera. For sure. Yeah. So Rosrin is keeping an eye uh, on on Nameless quite a bit. Um, you guys get to the quarters, no incidents. Um, Zeke shows shows them in. Uh, you all three enter the quarters. Um, Nameless kind of looks around and is, "This is this is wonderful. I have not been on a Starfleet vessel ever. I was on very briefly a Klingon vessel, and it was horrible." And they have no decorum and no first contact protocol besides shoot. <laughs> and I just was not interested um, with that at all. Um, this is lovely. And he kind of sits down and um, drums his hands on the table a little bit and, and looks at Commander Cooper. And and uh as as you're watching Zeke and Nameless interact, you, Rosrin, start to you're paying attention, and this is all very fascinating. This I don't I mean you just came off this mission where you interacted with an ancient species of the preservers, and that was fascinating as well. And you were there, um, I believe, when the Electro Nebula people that were mm-hmm. <laughs> were um, interfering on the holodeck. And so you've, this is now like the third first contact kind of, and I guess maybe the preservers weren't first contact, but for you and for the symbiont that you carry, this is all very new and very, very interesting. Um, Mm -hmm. and you can tell that, uh, like you, can tell that something is going on with the symbiont and you're not entirely sure if it's because the symbiont is just fascinated, you know, being a brand new uh, symbiont being joined the first time, these experiences are so almost overwhelming. And like at the moment you feel like the symbiont is a little overwhelmed, maybe not in distress, but definitely overwhelmed Um, and very, interested in learning more but you can also tell that something is not feeling quite right now you yourself like any any kind of manifestations of feeling warm or any of that you're getting more of that through the symbiont and not necessarily through you as a host Mm. Um, erex is experiencing some minor distress whereas rosrin is trying to understand what that distress is while also trying to pay attention. So you're kind of having right. this, this <laughs> yeah, inner monologue yeah, yeah. of what the F is going on. Right, um, right. So is there anything that you would like to do while you... Yeah, he's going to try to, to, you know, I mean, he must have been trained in this sort, or at least maybe he has some clue. He's going to try to go through his mind and try to find out, you know, if, if, you know, what, what, you know, is there any, you know, protocol for this, you know, what happens if your (laughs) symbiote starts to, starts to feel weird, you know, like what's what's going on, you know, is there anything he needs to do to protect it, you know, anything like that. So, um, okay. Yeah. So he's, he's kind of trying to, to, to kind of go through the, the Rolodex in his mind of, of that sort of thing. It's going to be a a difficulty one, but give me like a brief little like insight medical kind of thing just to see as far as like your own physiology, like have, have you felt this before? I got a crit. So I got a two. Nice. So you are definitely aware that you probably need to talk to the doctor um, (laughs) just to get a scan because you are not sure what's going on. You feel 
good. Mm -hmm. Like, the symbiont feels a little too good. (laughs) <laughs> which is very strange. Like it's yes. it's kind of dizzying to you as the host, but the the symbiont is just like you don't know if it's all the information coming in, and it's just like these are the best experiences ever. I'm going to remember this forever, and I'm going to pass this on <laughs> to more people. You don't know you don't know exactly what's triggering it, but man, the symbiont is starting to feel real good. Yeah, yeah. If it were a puppy, it'd be wagging. It'd be like, what's yeah, da, da, yeah. Da, 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 yeah. Da. serious, <laughs> serious symbiont wagging. I don't know what that looks like, but, <laughs> um, but you're, you're like, Rosrin though is like, what? Yeah, this is not. <laughs> yeah. This is not. This is not good. Um, does he feel like he would not? He would not want to risk it. So he would, he would, um, he would attempt to excuse himself and, uh, get another security officer sure, to come and, and relieve him. And, and, you know, um, uh, you know, he, he would make his apologies to, um, and I'm trying to debate, he might, he might le- he wouldn't want to interrupt whatever the, the commander and, and nameless are doing. Sure. So he would kind of do it quietly. He would kind of step back and he would say, you know, no, um, you know, your ex to, to security. Can I get a, a relief up here? And he would say where he was and, okay. and everything and, and have somebody else come up. And then as okay. soon as he, they relieved him, um, you know, he would go down to, to medical because because he's also aware that other medical stuff had been going on that was a little, you know, and stuff. So he's like, oh, OK, yeah. So, so. as as you're about to exit the room, I'm going to ask you to give me an insight security check real fast. All right. Difficulty Ooh. two. Oh, I will take four, though, because I it twice. <laughs> you. Wow. <laughs> Even though you are are obviously trying to figure out what's going on, um, inside, um, and in, in a bit of distress, trying to protect your symbiont and trying to extract yourself from the situation, you do catch sight and you realize that nameless is, is watching you as far as you can tell he has no pupils, right? These are pupilless red swirling eyes, Mm -hmm. but you get the distinct impression that, that they are watching you very, very closely. And mm-hmm. as you start to extract yourself, cause you're still f- very focused on this, but you, you still catch it. And you kind of hear him say almost to himself, but loud enough for you to hear very interesting. Haven't met one of those before. And you step outside of the room and you start to head to medical. And as you get your relief and you start to head to medical to deal with this, that is when the combat chirps and commander Chevrin is contacting you. Oh, okay. Uh, commander. Yes. Uh, Lieutenant Irax, uh, we've noticed some anomalies going on. There appears to be some illness taking crew members who have had interactions with Nameless. <sighs> yes, as a matter of fact, I'm on my way down to medical. Uh, right now, I'm experiencing some, uh, some some very odd, odd, odd feelings. Is the captain with you? Uh, no. Uh, I got, I was with Commander Cooper who was talking with nameless and I got relief, um, from, from one of my security. All right. Um, let the security with nameless and, uh, Cooper know that there may be some issues and if they feel off to let us know. Yes, commander. And he'll do that. He'll, he'll, you know, calm the security officer in the room and, and let him, let them know that whoever it happens to be there. Um, and continue to head to medical. All right. Um, as uh, you get to medical, uh, med bay, um, 
know you you don't uh you don't really bump into many other people on the way um except for you do run into ensign letter who uh you remember seeing him leaving the science lab earlier in the in the uh, escort of nurse rixla mm -hmm. and you remember kind of how he he looked really shaken well he doesn't look bothered at all anymore like mm. he's still kind of rosy cheeked but he is like grinning he is singing songs and you know he's on and he's like oh lieutenant i'm on my way to uh on my way to the dough you should come down it's 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 a real party down there uh, i just had to run back to my quarters for a second and change clothes <laughs> you don't even want to know what happened um and and he's like he's you know kind of just seems like he's on cloud nine uh for being in a startling and uh frightening situation right. where you know someone appears behind him uh, <laughs> in a science lab he seems like he's doing fine right okay well yeah Roger just you know raises his eyebrow like and uh well uh you know stay out of stay out of trouble lieutenant and he's like, he kind of has a confused look on his face. Like, what? And, what the and hell? as as you watch Ensign Letter go and just kind of twirl his way and kick his heels down the hallway, um, you almost feel like from the symbiont, you almost feel like a like a tug of almost longing. Like maybe <laughs> we want to go. go and, <laughs> I want to go. Yeah, you know, he's having fun. <laughs> you know, um, but I, I presume you. You uh, is I wish there was a constitution check in in, yeah. in, in this. Um, but you know what? Give me a command. Um, a command. Yeah. Uh, maybe fitness. Or a control would be control. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah. control. Let's do security, just because I know those are good for you. Let's yeah let's just see what difficulty two. Uh. Um. Okay, so you know how my last roll was good? Real good. Yeah. <laughs> mm, I got a complication. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh -oh. Well, <laughs> so uh, did you get any successes at all? No. Okay. So just a complication. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to enact that in that you kind of go, I could, I'll get to sick bay later. Sick bay's not going anywhere. <laughs> And uh, oh oh well, we just did get a reroll in from uh, from Quiet Eighty Two in chat. So if you want to reroll it, you are more than welcome to reroll it. All right, I'll I'll, I'll reroll it. Let's let's see what sounds good. Right. Okay, I I got one success there. Actually, two successes there. So okay, it was a it was a then, debate in the hallway. It was like it yeah, was Rajman's there, like. Uh, you know, what? Bought another, another threat. <laughs> I got, I got it in there. Um, yeah, yeah, you. There is, there is a moment where you're like, sick bay ain't going anywhere. Yeah, but he like but, starts walking. He like gets a couple steps down the hallway, and he's like, wait, what, what am I doing? Like, no, <laughs> yeah. turn around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you, you regain control of, of yourself, and you're like, no. I have to go to sick bay and, and you're almost a little startled by how much like the will of the symbiont is really, is really pulling yeah. on you, but they really want to go and have that kind of fun. So, um, but so yeah, you make it to sick bay. You don't run into anybody else on the way. Um, but when you get in there, um, you see commander Chevrin, uh, you see Dr. Haskins and uh, nurse Rixla is, is there, but, she's kind of distracted, not really paying attention to anything. It doesn't really seem to be doing sciencey medical stuff kind of is, is like playing around on a, on a, on a pad and not just kind of tapping her foot and her legs are crossed and one leg is kind of swinging and, and just doesn't seem too focused on anything. Chevrin looks very focused and has been <laughs> waiting for you to get there. Um, you do notice that commander Charlie is now in a bed. And Minkler is in a bed and looking quite, uh, quite unwell by this point. Mm. 
Actually, uh, Shavrin has been pacing, and he has actually left his cane up against one of the tables. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> That's serious. As a, uh, Roswin will walk in, and he says, uh, yeah, c- commanders. Is, Lieutenant- is Commander Charlie okay? I am We're fine. Sure. We're not sure. Oh. I am experiencing symptoms that are familiar, but a little unfamiliar. But we're going to get to the solution of everyone's illness relatively soon. Hopefully. Yes, I was I was uh, there hopefully. in the room and I... <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no. oh you said Hopefully. Hopefully yeah. we'll get to the bottom of it. Okay. Yes. Lieutenant Commander, have faith in your fellow crewmen. Oh, yes. I was uh Dr. Haskins, I was up with the uh with the with the nameless, the the, the being that we were talking to, and it, it's usually, I mean, as as you know, child, we're we're bonded to to our symbionts and but it felt like the the symbiont was getting overstimulated almost um overwhelmed and and very very warm and 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 i ran into lieutenant uh better out in the hallway and he was coming down the hallway and going to the dough seemed very uh very uh congenial and and ready to go and and my symbiote wanted to go and i have to tell you i was a few steps down the hallway towards the dough before i turned around and and came here and you did not think to bring them with you security officer erex well i was a little distracted at the time thank you um chevrin's um Artificial eye will basically glow as he scans um, Iraqs up and down. Can I roll to notice that Commander Chivrin is acting differently? Yes, please, please. So, uh... I mean, the fact that the fact that he mentioned that the symbiont is is seems to be experiencing some new feelings or uh, i guess distress um you're very interested because you know how important uh symbiont is as well as as well as the host but you right, know but that I'm... if the symbiont is ill and is injured then it is detrimental to the host i'm more interested in commander chivrin's all of a sudden very oh okay yeah you know agitated kind of sure harsh sure forwardness. So reason, I don't know what to roll for. Um, let's do a uh, let's do reason medical. Okay. I'll let you use medical because that's going to be your your big stat. But that's going to how how you're observing and and looking yeah. into things. That is two successes. Okay. That yeah you you get the you you're like um I need to scan him a little closer because. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's exhibiting symptoms um, as well. And as far as you know, uh, he never came into contact with Nameless. You do, with those two successes, I'm going to say that you recall, or you don't recall ever seeing them come into contact, at least in Medbay. Um, You might want to find out if they did, but as far as you saw, they did not interact physically. I'll be like, Lieutenant, I will get you in a minute. I don't, think you're in any immediate danger, so let's just find a bed. I'll be with you in one second. And then I'm going to walk over to Commander and like, Commander, I, I need to scan you and see if there's something going on because your behavior seems a little out of sort from what I've gotten to know you over a few months. I'm just becoming tired of my first officer's slapdash attempts at captaining. I... I'm going to start scanning, not even question it. Chavrin will kind of growl and roll his eyes, but not fight. 
uh, Eric's is sitting there like, you know, you're right, Commander. I, I should have. I have been absolutely slacking on on doing the things that I need to do. This is really, really... I shouldn't have done it. I, I should probably go and get him right now and, and and bring him back while you're while you're being scanned. I, I know where the dough is. I'll just go and get him right now. See that you do, and no, that was an order. No, Lieutenant, you stay there, Commander. I think this is spreading uncontrollably. It's, we don't know the path that this is spreading out. I don't want everybody wandering around the ship right now. If it is spreading there. throughout the ship, then we need to get everyone who has it. We shouldn't I, let the man dance to the dough. Well, that's already done. We don't need Lieutenant Tripes in through the hallways encountering more people to spread it to someone that hasn't gotten it yet. There is order... a... oh, oh, I was going to say, there is a moment here where while you guys are arguing and um, you, I, I, you're all kind of tugging at your collars as you get, it's all starting to feel a little warm in this room. Uh, tempers are flaring. Um, Minkler is, is very agitated and is starting to get vocal again. Um, I'm sure Charlie is still stabbing angrily at his tricorder, trying to, <laughs> trying to get data out of it that he wants. And there's a moment where the ship kind of lurches and you recognize that, um, you're not, the ship is not moving anymore. That's not even impulse power. Um, you're just, the ship has stopped. And you, a comm badge chirps, and it's it's Erax's uh, comm badge, and that security officer that she had left behind, or I'm sorry, he had left behind at uh, with Nameless and the commander, uh, says, uh, Lieutenant um, Commander Cooper, uh, just told Nameless to go down to the to the doe and meet the rest of the crew. Um, do you want me to follow or do you want me to, you know, want me to go back to my post? He looks at, at Dr. Haskins. Tell him to stay where he's at. Uh, can you, can you keep them there? Oh, there, I mean, he's, he's already gone. Uh, the, the commander, the commander told me it'd be fine, but I just wanted to know if I needed to stay here and guard the room or, uh, or go back. No, no, you don't need to stay and guard the room. Um, actually, come down to medical. Uh, okay. Um, all right. I, uh, no, yes, sir. That's where and, I am uh, right now. Okay, copy that, and uh, I'll be there shortly. And and that is where we're going to take a break um, with the Serenitis chilling out in space and uh, some of the senior staff not acting themselves. Um, but again, <laughs> as you do. Yeah. Um, so again, if you like what you're watching, uh, we would love for you guys to hit the little heart below and follow us. Um, if you really like it and you want to, you know, support it a little bit, uh, a little more then please consider subscribing and, uh, you get some cool emotes if you do and a nice little badge and chat. Um, but I guess I could hit all the, all the social media stuff. We do have a Twitter and a YouTube and a Facebook and a discord that you can uh, go to and hang out with us in the middle uh, or, you know, between shows and talk to the cast and see what we're doing. Um, but yeah, we thank you for being here for the first half. We'll be back in about 10 minutes. Uh, thank you all for being here and we'll see you soon. And we're back. Thanks for sticking with us, with us through the break. Um, one thing I forgot to mention before the break was that you can uh, support this show in another way. Um, you can actually, with tips and bits and donations, uh, you can actually influence the game in some way. Um, they, we have different tiers. I think I threw them in chat before. Um, so sorry if this bombards you all again. Um, but let's see. Our, our tiers here are $3 or 500 bits. You can name an NPC on the fly. Appears in a scene, may have a few lines of interaction, no roles. Um, so that uh, ops lieutenant that was in there earlier, you could have named him for a measly uh, $3. Um, 
you can also at five dollars you can name a support character um it'll be one that i would create like instant letter perhaps but you get to rename them and they would make roles in the episode or we'd roll up a whole brand new one to come up in a later episode um for ten dollars you could roll up a support character to uh Okay, that last one was name a support character. The next one is you get to create the character and they can appear in uh, at least one episode. Or then for $20, you could create an NPC that will appear in a significant way in at least one episode. So if that's something that you'd ever like to do is kind of play in our world a little bit, bring some people in to flavor flavor our uh, our stories and flavor the, the scenery, as you will, you could have a part in that if you wanted uh no requirement for to sit and join and chat and just hang out with us for free uh we love having you here but we are supported by viewers like you and we appreciate uh your viewership so um with no further ado i believe we're good to get back to the game so we had just realized that the serenitis had lurched to a halt in space which thankfully isn't too bad you know it's not like they like ran into something as far as you know. Um, but, uh, and we have some interesting uh, side effects passing through the crew. Some type of, I guess for lack of a better word, infection is, is going around and is agitating people, making them either really happy or really angry or just uncomfortable. And so let's get back to our friends in the sick bay where we have Commander Chavrin and Lieutenant Commander Charlie Lieutenant Commander uh, Keith Haskins and Lieutenant Junior Grade uh, Rosrin Erax. So the ship is stopped. Y'all are getting real heated. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think Chevrin sent Erax to go fetch the security officer or to fetch yeah. uh, low ensign letter is who you yeah. wanted them to go get. And then uh, Keith stopped him from being able to go and, and uh, fulfill that command. Mm -hmm. um, yep. what was the what was the ambassador's last name i can't remember i'm sorry ambassador cooper okay yeah i'm gonna well everybody's kind of fuming at each other i'm gonna be like computer what is the location of ambassador cooper at this moment ambassador cooper is in his quarters i thought we said he well, was my going security to... officer yeah they said they were going, going to, to the devil Dapple Doe, yeah. yeah. The nameless is going to the Dapple Doe. Okay, so computer, where is the entity known as nameless at this moment? The entity without a name is in the Dapple Doe, Deck Nine. Commander, can we issue a Commander Shivan, Can we issue a lockdown order to keep everybody contained within the Dapple Doe at this moment? Put the Dapple Doe on. Um, I'll tap my com badge. Put the Dapple Doe on full quarantine. Uh, who are you? Who are you belaying or sending that to? Like Halata or, or security or who? Um, either security or engineering, whoever has the power to do that. Although now I realize if we don't have any power, that probably won't work. The ship has power. You're just not moving. Mm. You, you, I mean, I get, I don't know if you would really be able to tell, but you could tell that it lurched and you don't, there's something different in the way that you kind of feel that perhaps the ship is not whatever impulse power or whatever it was doing in space. Like when it was keeping in orbit, something happened and, uh, and the ship is not, like I said, I don't want to say a drift cause it does have power, but something has changed. Um, and when you, you, you tap your badge, um, you get no response. Can we issue that through the computer? Can the computer initiate a lockdown? Uh, authority to lockdown? This, uh, medical off med Commanding Medical Officer Keith Haskins, code 1738655 slash B, issuing medical emergency lockdown at the Dapple Doe. Uh, emergency lockdown initiated. Chevrin will sort of glare at um, Haskins for a moment. Return the glare like the classic kind of what? 
there is a beep at the terminal and it draws your attention keyed and you see that the emergency lockdown has been lifted. Peter, who lifted that? Wasn't the captain? Emergency the lockdown re- lifted by Captain Krenfell Threx. <laughs> uh, tap my badge. Chavrin to Captain... Uh, Chavrin to... Th- Commander Chavrin to Threx. This is your captain speaking. Oh, no. What the hell are you doing? We have an unknown entity on this board, on board, causing havoc and mayhem and spreading sickness. We need to enact the quarantine protocols. I have not seen anyone sick in, like, like, we're just having a good time. Uh, I'm not going to lock these people in here. Uh, if you saw what was happening down here, you would not want them to be doing it in front of everybody. I tell you that much. This has been quite an evening. And if you mean uh, our new friend, uh, I don't see that anything, uh, I, you know, he has just really shown himself to be quite quite the party animal, if you will. Um, and, uh, oh, just, uh, and you kind of, Right before the comm clicks off, um, you get the impression that he was not talking to you anymore, and he started to like call out for something, um, but he gets he gets cut off. Doctor, relieve the captain of his duty. Computer, same commander, medical officer. Sure. Keep asking. Sure. It's the same password as before. Relieving. The captain of duty, he is under the influence of a virus and is no longer fit to command. Once that is executed, lock down the Dapple Doe. And I will put in my um, confirmation code as well to back him up on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, a combat chirps and you hear uh, your uh, chief engineer uh, come on. And uh, Commander Anya is, is like... I need someone to come down here and help me figure this out. I cannot figure out why the ship is not doing what I tell it to do when I tell it to do it. I need someone down here. I need some someone good with numbers. Bring me someone with numbers. Uh, Commander Charlie sits up, taps his badge, and goes, I am excellent with numbers. I will be down yes. shortly. Team Lizard, come to me. Thank you. And uh, that's, that's the, the end Team of that. <laughs> so the, the ship isn't running. We have a mysterious virus running rampant. And the captain is partying. Is there any competency on this ship? I am incredibly uh, competent. Well, this is all my fault. This is all my fault. I, I should have I should have let the captain lock him in the brig. Doctor, you get. Oh, go ahead. Before I go down to engineering, he, I yeah. think I have a theory about what might be affecting the crew. That theory is what? It looks like we are all mirroring the effects of having consumed large quantities of alcohol. And I believe that is not only affecting everyone's judgment, it is making us impaired and that is why the captain is currently engaging in what is the human phrase shenanigans in the dappled dough and that is why we saurians who have a high alcohol tolerance we do tend to oscillate between being very lethargic because that is what alcohol does to us But I should warn you, it has the tendency to also bring out our more primitive instinct. It is like that movie that I tried to show you the other day about the park with all of the ancient dinosaurs in it. Something like that. Now that said, I should probably be going. That said, I think you need to remain here until we figure out what's going on. Uh, I, Irax's uh, badge 
chirps at this point. Uh, Commander Garhar to to Lieutenant uh, Erex. This is Lieutenant Erex. Go ahead. I need guards posted at my door and my quarters sealed with a security lock. I cannot be um, allowed amongst the crew. I need to. I, I need. I need now. I need whoever you've got. I need at least two guards. Um, preferably not somebody scrawny. I can take them. We can't afford to lock your crew door with the brig prerogative, but we cannot spare anyone to guard you. We need to shut down the ship and make sure to round everyone up and get them into their quarters. Whatever you have to do, just get someone down here to lock the door. If I do it, I will be able to unlock it, and I need someone else from security to handle it. Doctor, would you send Doctor send a nurse down with a hypo spray to knock out knock out Garahar? Yeah, that'd be great if I had any nurses I think are competent. And I point over to the corner to uh, Nurse Rip, Ripka. Rixla, she Rixla. looks. Uh, she did not miss that comment, and uh, she is. She goes, "Oh, not competent, am I?" And so she flips her hair and she walks out of the med bay. So you admit yes, that this is what he means. So you admit that your medical team is incompetent. Then I admit that this whole crew is incompetent. Agreed. That is oh, rude. No. We are quite competent. get to engineering. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, okay. No. Oh, oh dear. Did you, oh, no. did you did you just shout at Charlie? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, Charlie, like, his throat, like, sack starts to swell a little bit, and he hisses a little bit, and you see, like, his little hands start to, like, go back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Chevrin's uh, robotic hand will clutch at the uh, Ushan Tor, the ice axe at his side. Get to engineering. Uh, can I make a command roll? Sure, sure. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to use a determination with one of my values. Okay. Every problem has a solution. Okay, <laughs> sounds great. Sounds great. For this case, because uh, uh, because Charlie is is also flaring up, I'm going to give it a difficulty of three, uh, but I'm not going to make it an opposed roll. All right. Nothing Charlie has um, would like really apply to that, but what would Charlie have to roll? No, I'm oh, not going to make it in yeah. a post roll. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna... Would that be control or daring? Let's do uh, let's do daring because uh, you're not super in control, but you're trying to get it back. All right, so I started with two successes, and I got another two from that. Fantastic. And okay, I'm, so uh, I'm also going to use one of my talents, veteran. Uh, when I okay. use the determination, I get to roll a effect die. On a right. chevron, I get to keep that determination. Okay, fantastic. Unfortunately, I do not get to keep it. Okay, okay, but you do, um, you do have an uh, effect on on Charlie, um, and I'm going to say that Charlie, you do not head to you want to you want to go to engineering but you are you have been you know he kind of pulled he's pulling rank and uh i and, won the pit measuring contest yeah and uh <laughs> you know your your background in starfleet and your your uh you know your own moral up upstandingness uh and ethics are telling you that you have to do what you are being ordered to um about so, that time so though oh go ahead I was going to say, in that case, um, so Charlie, you see him kind of like hiss and flex his fingers again, but after like the, the last word that uh, the commander says, you see that Charlie very much kind of like ducks down physically and still hisses in his his direction, but Charlie is visibly cowed. Yeah, mm. and Chevrin will okay. sort of pull himself up and lean forward as you <laughs> shirk backwards. And Majin um, looks about this Dr. Time. Haskins like, can't you do something <laughs> yeah. about this? That's what the that's what the doctor kind of stands full height. He's like, 
and I'm going to look at the commander as like, you don't, or you won't treat my patients in sickbay like Yes, we have the problem. Yes, Charlie normally could handle the situation down in engineering. But what makes you even begin to think that he can do anything? I mean, we're all just out of our minds right now. I will treat my crew however I deem necessary. Well, too so bad sit Sorry, down. Do you so sit down. Here? I mean, and I can't hold work on this on, on my this. own here, okay? Like, there is a. a Erax, stand down. You are all interrupted by over the over the general ship comms. Um, just the sound of of uh, Commander uh, Anya in engineering. Absolutely, um, you know it sounds like it sounds like she's sobbing, and she goes, "I need someone with numbers to help me, please, anyone." And then it cuts off. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander, get down there immediately. Pissing again, but kind of scurries in a hurry to get down there. <laughs> Doctor, give Erax the hypospray and get her to Garahar. Yeah. Oh, so oh, we're, oh we're to, gonna, to carry it, to deliver it to Garahar. We're just going to spread whatever this is throughout the ship even faster. Is that what you're saying? It has already been spread. It's already been spread... But you're going to... Are you questioning get... a direct order? Actually, I am, because this is in my domain. This is medicine, and I don't think you're in the right frame of mind to be making these decisions. These decisions need to be made by warriors, not by medics. Oh, that's when I do can, the classic clean on growl. Can everyone just stop fighting? And uh, I, at this point, Chevron will unhook the... Uh, ice knife, uh, ice axe. And I'm gonna go to my desk and grab my. Uh oh. Okay, Erex, do you <laughs> go ahead? I'm gonna go ahead and let them let them duke this out for a second. But uh, I assume you're going to want to step in as a security personnel. At yeah, some point. <laughs> he, he's really not feeling confident right now. But he's like, ah, oh, I oh, wouldn't man, either. I should do <laughs> I something. Ah, oh, no. So he like pulls out his his phaser and he's like, "Come on, people! I don't want to have to 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 phaser you." Yeah. So we'll go ahead and do a quick round of combat. If you guys, um, I assume you're going to not necessarily. <laughs> there's not really a, a a a combat mechanic for not being you know an enemy side and a home side. So. I'm going to say you both attack at the same time. Uh, if they're both melee attacks, I'm going to say... Uh, well, so Chevrin had his Ushantor on his person. Mm -hmm. Do you have to go get your dagger, Doctor? Yeah, I'd have to, yeah. Oh, Chevrin will wait, because this is an honorable duel. Okay, okay. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so there's this moment where uh, both our, our um, strategic... Uh, operations officer and our chief medical officer uh prepare themselves for a duel of honor mm -hmm. and uh one twirling an ushan tour and the other one a house dagger and uh i'm gonna have you both roll since they're melee i'm going to say that's a daring um yeah i think that's a daring security uh, I will say traditionally it is fitness security, but I'm willing to do daring security because I'm much better at that. I will allow either, whichever one you prefer. Going with daring and security, and also have a focus in hand to hand combat. Okay. Uh, I do as well. I think, and I think uh, in this situation where you both are angry and and you know this is kind of a battle of the of the alpha. <laughs> I think I, I'm going to go with, I think daring fits. All right. Okay. And, um, so daring is security, correct? Correct. Yes. And I would like to spend a momentum to gain a bonus die. And I suggest you do the same. Sure. Doing the same thing. <laughs> there okay. we go. We're using momentum to fight each other. Everybody stop it. Two successes. <laughs> stop the madness. All right. How many did you have? Two. I got a natural one. I got one die that was under my security, which is four. And then I got one that was under the total. So I got five successes. 
Oh, okay. No. Well, uh, as you guys get into this uh, altercation and this, it is clear that Commander Chavrin has the upper hand. Um, uh, Lieutenant Commander Haskins is snarling and angry, and and you know this is the most Klingon you have ever seen um, come through in his in his behavior, uh, Lieutenant Erex. Um, mm. So do you want to step in now or do you want to continue to let them uh I, let them attack each other? Right now they're locked in and and Chevrin is is leaning in with his Ushantor and and uh you know Haskins is holding that arm back mm-hmm. and uh the dagger go- is pretty ineffective as he's trying to as he's being overpowered at the yeah. moment. I'm going for a facial scar to shame the Klingon. Yes, Obviously, the lesser of the warrior species. <laughs> you know, just I loved having you as a commander. You were great. Uh, uh, I don't know. Eric, I don't know who I, yeah. Eric's just like, oh gosh, oh gosh, commanders, stop it! And he like goes in to try to. <laughs> Not even with a phaser. You're just like trying to break him up with. He, yeah. he didn't feel I, comfortable with it. It kind of shook. So he's like, he's just, he just kind of did just use that. And he's going to try to pull him apart. And he's going, come um, on, we need to figure this out. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to give you, then you get to make a daring uh, security role. Uh, unless you want to use fitness, but daring, because you are doing a, quite a bold action. Yeah. I'm, by hopping I'm, in there. I'm, <laughs> In between yeah, an Andorian and a to, but... like half Klingon. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure that the 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 uh, symbiont is like, woo, <laughs> fights, yeah, blood, fights, fights. <laughs> you know, this is cool. And the like, oh, I don't want to do this. <laughs> All Symbiot. right. Oh, this is oddly Ooh. hot. Okay, so I will take three successes. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. So you get in there and you manage to kind of just push them apart and you're yelling at them too. Um, Cause even though your rank is Lieutenant junior grade, you're still the chief of security. God yeah. damn it. And uh, you know, <laughs> this is, this is ridiculous. You have a symbiont in distress and yes, you came exactly. here for help and you've just gotten chewed out and over your shoulder, there's a, poof, and a, a beam of like, like a, a phaser beam blackens the wall. There's a scorch mark on the wall and, uh, and this startles the three of you and you, you all turn and you see Stan Minkler sitting there on his, on his bed. And he's like, shut the hell up and somebody figure this out. <laughs> or if you're going to fight, take it to the gym. And then he lays back down <laughs> and, and itches his arm. <laughs> uh, Chevrin will go to dress him down, but take a deep breath and put the Ushantor up. And as as my, Chevrin walks... Oh, sorry. My, oh, no, you can... I was going to say, as you walk... I'm, you're just going to hear me mutter my breath. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> my apologies, Commander. We need um, to get this under control, but I was... brash. Um, about this time, you get yeah. another... There's another combat chirp. And it's once again, it's it's Lieutenant Erax's, and it's another security officer. And they say, "Sir, we need backup down here at the Dappled Doe. It is, it is going, it's kind of going nuts down here. Um, we need, we need backup. There are people. There's fighting, but there's also a lot of other stuff going on, and people are out of control, and they're." And, and 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 there's a guy here. He says his name is Bacchus, and he just he he's like he's having a great time, um, but he's also he's like really encouraging the fights, and it's it's not going it's not going well. We're, I'm running out of people. I, I I'm the only one down here that doesn't seem to be affected by it. Okay, and I, and I'm we're going. Yeah, this security officer identifies himself as, um, as, uh, let me, I don't have a name for him. Does, does Chad have a name for this? But you know them to be another Trill. Oh, okay. 
but they are not joined. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. All right, I get it. All right. Lieutenant, Commander, rather than opening up the Dapple Doe, would you both agree to flooding it with Axanol? It's a gas gas anesthetic. It should knock everybody until we can figure this out. That does seem to be a proper course of action, yes. Lieutenant, are you okay if we enact that protocol? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We we can do that. Um, yeah, we definitely need to to figure this out and stop everybody fighting. Going to ask the computer to flood the Dapple with the axonal gaseous gas to sedate and basically knock everybody out of the operation. I am. I mean, should, uh, should I go down there? I think I should probably go down there, right? I would like to try to give an inspiring speech to our poor, poor Rosrin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and while he's doing the inspiring speech, I'm going to give Charlie a hypo spray full of a stimulant and tell him to go down to the engineering. Rosrin. Did, did Charlie already oh, leave? Right. Or did Charlie stick around to watch the fight? I think Charlie was already, already got... Yeah, Charlie's already on his way down there. Never mind. mind. (laughs) Rosrin, you have my apologies. You are young, yes, but you are incredibly talented, knowledgeable, and motivated. There is a reason that our wonderful captain has made you the chief of security. He has faith in you, and I have faith in you. You know the right course of action. Stay the course. Very good. Nice. Yeah, Sir Osborne will sort of... Right, right. Okay, 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 okay. Doctor? Commander, my apologies. It's all right. I apologize to you. Neither one of us are functioning real well at the moment. Do you have possibly a stiff drink to steady our nerves before we go into this? Uh... (laughs) Symbiont is like, what? (laughs) Drink? (laughs) And the symbiont is thrilled to be headed down anywhere else. (laughs) I I walk over to my desk and... Maybe some of that Dominion wine. Yeah, I've got some oh. <laughs> Dominion wine. I fill three glasses with about three fingers of it and hand it out. Is it called Vorta Vino? <laughs> <laughs> it's whatever that like rot gut stuff we got in the first episode yeah, was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> so, uh, not we... Linnea, we got rid of all of that. <laughs> oh no. That's bad juju. <laughs> so, uh, I suggest we quaff and then we Figure this out. Fortify. <laughs> yeah. uh, Eric will actually go ahead to, to do it. Just to just to shut the symbiont up uh, <laughs> for for a little bit. Uh, and you know, you, you know, maybe a little drink isn't bad, you know, like okay. So yeah, he'll 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 drink with uh, the commanders. Okay. Before um Lieutenant Irax leaves. I'm going to give her the hypo spray of the stimulant, hoping maybe if she starts to lose focus, that'll help her and the or him and the symbiote to remain on task. Mm-hmm. And, have uh, you ever have you scanned uh, Rosrin yet to determine uh, anything about the symbiont? No, we have. <laughs> I kept getting distracted. We <laughs> haven't scanned him yet. Things were happening. Yeah, this, yeah things People were no, that's angry. <laughs> Distracted mean, by all the fighting. Yeah, yeah, there was. Yeah, yeah, you were in a you were in a battle for territory. Yeah. And I, I, honestly, at this point, I think he's a little too far gone with this virus right now. To that's fine. That's him. fine. I mean, you can you can safely assume that the symbiont is going to be reacting mm. in a way that is similar to everything else. Yeah. yeah. Drunk, upset. Uh, not not enjoying being like tied down right now, um, like stuck in, you know, definitely agitated and in distress. Actually, uh, I'm going to use a mechanic I don't think we've used before. 
I would like okay. to spend a momentum to ask the GM a question. Sure. And essentially, I'm going to po poise this towards the doctor to get the answer. So, okay. uh, Rosrin himself seems to be pretty put together, but he said the symbiote is having issues. And our yes. other Trill security officer is managing to keep their head about them during all of this. Yes. Is it possible that there's something about Trill biology we could learn and help create a, a cure? Um, uh, you, would, you would put the dots together, uh, Haskins, uh, that there is probably something about Trill biology that is enabling... Rosrin and the other unjoined trill that unjoined. does not have a symbiont to avoid the direct effects of whatever this is. Um, in fact, Rosrin, go ahead and give me an insight. Um, again, this is more your bio, like you uh, thinking about things. So I'm going to say insight. We're going to go, we're going to go with the security role because it was a security role that you got this information earlier, and this is going to be to recall that. We got another oh. moment to work oh. to three. That's a, that's a nine and a two, so I will take a three successes. Fantastic. You, it's at this point when you hear Chevrin and Haskins kind of discussing this and referring to troll biology, and you remember locking eyes with him before, you, uh, with Nameless before you walked out. And him and and them saying, "I've never met one of those before." Ah, yes. So Roswell will speak up and say, uh, "Commanders, uh, before I left the room earlier, when Nameless was speaking to Commander Cooper, um, I I heard him say something like, i 'I've never run into one of them before.' Perhaps he meant Trill." Is that could be um let's get that your the the other security officer that contacted you they are unjoined correct yes and they seem perfectly fine and they reported that they uh seem to be the only one who was not engaging in the fighting and revelry have them report have them report here we need to scan scan them and see see what's going on and i'm going to contact um commander charlie mm. and you know Blue commander charlie are you there lieutenant commander charlie have you made it to engineering yet uh, have I made it to engineering? You have made it to engineering, and you found... I, sh I never did go back to that, but yeah, you did find uh, Commander uh, Anya like beside herself weeping, and you determined that she did stop the ship because she was trying to uh, route some... It was some like standard thing, and she made the slightest mistake. The slightest mistake that was so easy to fix, but in this heightened state, because you are quite sure that she is also affected by this virus. Um, you remember her being in the dough earlier when the captain had called everybody down for drinks um, and was doing some routine things, made the slightest mistake. It, it, it just, it, it, it set her beside herself. Like she cannot even that she made this mistake and she wants somebody there to double check her work because Obviously, something is not okay, and she needs someone else here. And so she's just had you, like, running through, like, basic maintenance stuff for engineering. And she's like, but the ship cannot go anywhere until I know what is happening. We cannot move. <laughs> so, so you've been down there looking at, you know, some of the more basic things to, to a chief engineer or a chief science officer. Um, but, uh, and trying to kind of console her because she seems to feel as though this might have been the end of like everything. Like the ship is going to fall apart if she can't figure this out. Uh, Charlie will be, who have just finished giving her like a rousing pep talk, focusing on one reptilian superiority and why team lizard will carry it through. And two, how she's a brilliant engineer. 
Um, but because of his lethargic state, he'll finish this pep talk right as he's about to get him the message. And uh, after, he'll be like, Lieutenant Commander Charlie here. And then that's, oh yeah, he's been caught up at that point. Um, engineering is fine. We are currently priming the plasma injectors. We believe that the warp core will be fully operational soon. Great. It, you know, it's engineering talk, and I'm like, Psh. uh, we may have a lead on cure to this. Can you make your way back to the sick bay? I can. Because uh, you did. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Oh, it's like, uh, I think between the two of us, we may be able to come up with a cure, but with my condition and your condition, I think together. Best, the best chances. Then I will be there soon. And then you hear some strange hissing, like from Charlie over the communicator, because uh, he's clearly forgotten to hang up. Uh, but he will head right back up there as soon as possible. Was he just cussing at us? Was that cussing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the universal translator cannot pick up uh, Saurian cussing. It's, it just hasn't been programmed <laughs> in yet. Um, um, at this time, there is an all call over the, again, the general ship comms. And you hear a familiar uh, voice tinged with joviality. Um, and, uh, but also something else. And you hear, this is uh, your captain speaking, Bacchus, first of my name. And, uh, I have seen your records and I have seen how you've treated my kind in the past and I cannot abide and engineering, please get this ship moving. We have places to go. That's not good. Uh, I should probably go I should probably go take care of that, uh, commanders. Um, I will go if you need to scan me for potential uh, information. We can do that. And then I should probably go and just speak to uh, uh, Bacchus. Bacchus? <laughs> uh, why, does that name, why does that name ring a bell? Does uh, no? Commander, you should perhaps come with me. Yes. Commander um, um Commander Haskins, uh, due to medical emergency, I am at your leave. Um, but I do believe it would be good for us to have a few hands at the Dapple Doe. So by your leave, I will accompany Lieutenant Junior Grade uh, I don't, your ex. I don't, let, me, let me get a scan of him first. Then we're, you also contacted the other security yeah, 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 yeah. Rajman would have done that. And then while and, I and would have explained to him, we think troll biology might be in connection to what's going on. So we need you to come down to medical bay so that we can, that Dr. Haskins can study and, and see what might be the difference. And I'm like, I'm starting to really feel the effects. I'm like fumbling in the tricorder, trying to concentrate about that time. I'm going to hand the hypo, a hypo spray full of stimulants to Commander Chagrin. I'm going to try it on myself. I'm going to hit myself with a stimulant to see if that helps me focus. And then I will do a scan on Rosary. Self-medicating in the med bay. Hey, man. I am a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a doctor. You, you want me to roll for this, the scan? Yeah, go ahead and roll a, uh, let's see... Give me, because you are feeling a little jittery and not quite yourself, go ahead and give me a control okay. uh, science or control medical. Control what, medical? Yeah. What is the difficulty? For this, let's get a difficulty two. Two. I'm going to, if everybody's okay with it, I'm going to buy one just to be on the safe side. Yeah. That's fine. Chad has capped you out. Uh, you also do still have your, um, I don't remember, determination. 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 Yeah, determination yeah, can give yeah, you still have essentially a dice that rolls a one without rolling it. Since I have the uh, dairy or control of medicine, you know what? I'm going to go with the three. 
Okay. Uh, that is, uh, I've got a four, which is under my medicine, so that's a crit, right? Yeah. Yep. That's three successes. Fantastic. Um, you can s use that, uh, I mean, essentially you would generate a momentum to cap. You could use it yep. to get extra information if you wanted to, or we could just throw it in the pool. Um, I think I'm going to use it for extra information because we want to. Yeah, that's what I would have suggested too. Okay, Absolutely. so this is your scanning uh, Erex? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's going to give us a good baseline with a join trill and a non join trill. Mm hmm. What it is. That's... Okay, so you, you, you take this scan and you, while you're doing the scan, you can see that. Uh, the symbiont is clearly is experiencing those symptoms that we talked about earlier is does seem to be affected by, um, whatever this infection is. Um, but you also see that the host is absolutely not. Um, the host seems to be producing, uh, in response to the symbionts being, uh, sick or distressed, the, uh, the, uh, host is, kind of producing antibodies to combat it, the effects of it. So thus keeping Erex uh, kind of stable and unaffected, but also a little uh, feeling because they're still constantly in, con you know, they're, they're bonded with that symbiont and it's a mental and a physical bond that is, is really creating this kind of uh, vicious dichotomy. <laughs> that they can all that they witness uh very uh very tangibly okay. so um but yes the the trill the trill is uh the trill host is producing antibodies that seem to be keeping those effects of the infection from manifesting okay. all right thank you uh you head down to the dough i, I i've gotten everything i can from wait for the other security officer and Commander Charlie, and hopefully we can figure uh, Yes, Commander. Right, so He'll look at we... Commander Chevron. <laughs> I'll nod and take the uh, heft the hypo spray. Uh, Chevron walks towards the door, stops, removes the um, Ushan Tor from his belt, sets it on the table, and picks his cane back up. Mm. And About that Ralph time, I think Com Lieutenant Commander Charlie does arrive in Med Bay. Yay! Yeah, and Roswin will follow Commander Chevron out. And, and to keep it from going back over a bunch of information, I'll just relay to Commander Charlie everything that we've figured out so far with the trill, the join trill, and that we're waiting for the security guard to get here so we can scan an unjoined trill to see if we can Whatever it is. Yeah, no, Charlie nods uh, as, as they're walking and talking, and he's soaking up all the information and offering his. But they, they will. They, 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 they gel, essentially. Yeah. We're talking science. We're science bros. <laughs> science, right. science, science bros. Science. <laughs> Chavrin and Erex, where were you guys headed? Were you headed to the Doe, or were you headed to where? Oh, uh, you presume Bacchus was uh, broadcasting from. What do you think? Uh, we should probably... <sighs> probably head towards Bacchus. He's out there at the sort of epicenter of everything. So hopefully if we can, in essence, defeat Bacchus, we can save the crew. Yeah. Um. I would recommend rolling a roll a real quick control. Mm, what would be a good computer's roll? Essentially, essentially, you need to figure out where he was. Uh, yes, um, probably um, engineering or science. Engineering works. Yeah. Control engineering. Uh, both of us, or one of us with one assisting. Yeah, one assisting would be great. I can um, assist. With... I'll assist. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and what's the difficulty? Uh, just a one. Oh, I rolled a two, which is good. So, one success. 
Um, it looks like I've got one success as well. Okay. You're able, you, you ask the computer where Bacchus was broadcasting from and see if you can pinpoint it. Um, and, uh, it responds quite, quite plainly. Uh, Captain Bacchus is on the bridge. Um, I'm also going to suggest that we spend two momentum to create an advantage. Okay. Um, essentially, because we know that we're having issues with, uh -oh, we you know, Sean. because we know oh, we're yeah. having issues with the disease, we're not necessarily cured of it, but we are very knowledgeable of the fact so we can sort of act more measured because we are aware that there is some issues. Sure. Sure. Okay. Is everyone okay, okay with I that? Mm -hmm. Everyone good? No, that sounds great. My yeah. camera. Just yeah, died, no, I think so. that's good. So sounds I've spent good. the momentum. Excellent. Uh, you're at four momentum. Um, so you guys make your way to the bridge. And uh, when you, I assume you're in the turbo lift, and mm -hmm. when the turbo lift reaches the bridge, um, the doors do not open immediately. Bridge entry requires authorization. Uh, author authorization, Commander Chevrin. Bridge entry requires authorization. Lieutenant I'll Nirax. try my security. Yeah, I'll try my security uh, authorization. The door, the door opens. Um, you're not quite sure if you're if it was your authorization that worked, but you don't you don't think it was. On the other side of the door is uh, the ship's first officer, uh, Commander Halada, and the Cation uh, with her dark fur and her dark hair. Um, looks a little bit more um, severe than you are used to seeing her. And to the point that, like, she might be a little bushier than you're used to seeing. Her tail is, is moving very quickly, whipping back and forth behind her. Um, and she, she almost hisses at you. The bridge is not for you. Commander Halada, you are under the influence of an unknown disease. Uh, we are all under the influence of it. If you I let am under me... the influence of my captain. And she kind of, she almost purrs and spits at you. Hiss. Loud right. hiss. I will, <laughs> um, I will tap my comm badge and, uh, um, Commander Shabrin to Captain. And there's no need to use those devices to speak to me. It um, is proper protocol, and if well, you are in fact the Captain... Bacchus, Bacchus steps uh, beside Halada and says, uh, I thank you, but they may, they may enter. And he returns to the captain's chair and uh halada takes her place at at his left hand right hand i was looking at them instead of looking from them <laughs> stage left or house left yeah right right yeah. Right. <laughs> right exactly she takes her place at the chair that is assigned to her that she would normally sit in <laughs> yeah um he was like, uh, and he, he taps, he does tap his comm badge and he says, uh, engineering, how much longer until the ship will be ready? And, uh, Lieutenant Anya, uh, says that it should, it should only be a matter of moment, uh, like maybe 10 minutes. Uh, belay that order, Captain, or not Captain, um, Commander, Commander Anbara. Uh, she responds with some confusion and she's like, well, I have to start the engines. Uh, we should sit for a little bit, start the engines, but keep the uh, power. Essentially, start the engines, but don't sure, move. Sure, just don't, don't go anywhere. Yeah. We, 
right now you do take note that the bridge is empty except for Halada and uh and Bacchus, uh as as named now Bacchus. Um there is no con or helm helmsman on the sh uh, on the bridge at this time. So uh, you're not entirely sure if Bacchus understands the all the workings of starships. Um mm. Or if he thinks that starting the engines will just make it go. Hmm. This was your plan the whole time. <laughs> um, it was not my plan the whole time. I was here to spread joy and revelry and fun. And, Is Charlie uh, with us? Wait a minute. I thought Charlie was helping. Oh. You... If you would like to be with us, you can. I was going to go with it. Uh, I was going to uh, have you help and keyed in the sick bay. I was just uh, confused. Oh, no. Uh, I got confused. My bad. That's okay. No, That's um, okay. I should have been more specific. Charlie would probably be with keyed, to be honest. I got confused. That's fine. So, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. He still says the same thing. Bacchus will. He goes, uh, yeah. I came here to. you. I Your probe came into my home and found me. And I came here and I extended a hand of friendship and and love and fun and just jovial enjoyment of life. And I find that when my kind have interacted with you before, you have responded with other and not just Starfleet, but others in your Federation have responded with violence and death and eradication you have our you have my sincerest apologies for that and we will i know will we cannot make well return my children to me no but will your apologies return those who we lose to this have There's you lost anyone we nearly did yes by my own hand i nearly slew our doctor our chief medical officer. You bring chaos. We cannot control ourselves. All we are asking is you return our own control to us. We do not consent to these erratic emotions. I do not give them with, like, I, I do not give them with purpose. You do not give it them. It comes with you me. You force them. It is them. me. Excuse me? You do not give them. You force them. All it we are asking... It is not my intent to force anything. I do nothing but interact with people. How your bodies respond is not my responsibility. I cannot change how I interact with your environment would you say that the way our science interacts with your bodies is our fault then i'm not going to say it's your fault but this is not the welcome that i'm used to receiving no one usually Did comes at me with anger and nor have I ever, I mean, clearly I've never been killed. My children have. You have, you have found ways to keep my, my children from proliferating and uh, you have killed us. Could I have when, left? Oh, sorry. When, when my children have found hosts that, that keep them and allow them to grow, those hosts are returned to me. And they can join me in the blessed everlasting of the universe. So you knew how you would inter how your biology would interact with ours. Not all. But many. And, and you didn't see fit to offer a warning beforehand. Again, every new uh, interaction has the possibility to surprise me. Again, I came here when your probe came and found me. Well, we were unaware of 
your existence, to be honest. And I, we need to come to an agreement. And I would, I sincerely hope we can come to a peaceable agreement. Halada uh, stands up at this point and kind of stands, uh, interposes herself between you and Bacchus. Uh, what sort of agreement would you would you suggest? Um, the base, basic agreement would be for you to leave our ship, and then after you do, we will, as things calm down, discuss amongst our crew members if anyone would be interested in joining you with full knowledge and consent of the effects that your biology has on us. I am not opposed to this, but I cannot be responsible for what happens. I cannot help you find a way to circumvent the effects of my biology upon yours. I can accept that compromise. I was made acting captain by Krenfell. Um, uh, the cap... Kryn, um, I can't remember his last name now. Threx. Threx. Uh, Threx did not have the authority to do so. He was taken out of power by Commander Haskins as part of a medical doctrine. He, uh, Commander Haskins, is acting captain. Yeah, the medical officer would take over at that point if it's yeah. a medical emergency. Yeah, Bacchus, uh, Bacchus seems, even though his eyes, again, are pupilless and it is hard to discern what emotion is going on behind them, you feel that he does misunderstand some of this is, or, you know, it just isn't computing for him entirely. He is not... He doesn't deal with computers. Uh, his his pheromones and things like that work solely on their own. Um, uh, Chevrin will uh, easily easy take out his phaser, put it to the floor, drop his cane, and step forward. I am coming at you with no weapons. I'm coming Hamada at you in the name. does this and get a little yeah. territorial of the bridge, but. Um, <laughs> Bacchus puts a hand on her shoulder and uh, encourages her to step aside. Quietly. I am here with no weapons, no defenses, asking for peace. Please let us work together. In where would you have me go that we may discuss the uh, recompense of your actions against my people and the reciprocal of uh, the re you know the recompense of mine I'm sure that we could find some sort of way to communicate where your biology would not affect us and we would be able to conduct negotiations and discussions you have one of our com badges we could use that to contact you while you are still in your nebula. He looks down at the com badge and uh, uh, it, you know, he, he looks at it and, you know, he takes it off and he's like, this, this was your captain's. But we need to have a way to communicate with you if we are to make things right between our peoples. Oh, I suppose something like this would be fine. Uh, I am also not opposed to staying on the ship if you would allow me to stay here. I'm sure that you can find some way to contain uh, whatever. Find a way to uh, contain me and my offspring. Uh, Lieutenant, would you contact the med bay and see how they're coming along? Uh, yes, yes, Commander. And uh, he does so. And, you know, 
Lieutenant Irax to Dr. Haskins and Lieutenant Commander Charlie. And yeah, he'll, he'll communicate down there to see what they're up to. <laughs> the first response you hear from Haskins is like, what? We were just looking for, um, we have been in communication with the being now known as Bacchus. And we have been essentially infected with his children, but we are working to come to a diplomatic solution to this. Would it be possible to rem find a way to remove them while they are still alive and to quarantine Bacchus and his children on the ship so we can have discussions. I don't know. Because I'm like really under the influence. I want to be like, can he hear us talk right now? Or it can it hear us talk? They can hear us, yes. Uh, open comms uh, as a show of good faith. I'm going to stage whisper to Commander Charlie. Oh, no. How do we remove a virus alive? We could we, siphon out all of the blood, but that could possibly kill the individual. Wait, that's actually a brilliant idea. Killing everybody? No, no. There, it, we could. There were old forms of therapy on Earth where blood was drained and then put back in. We could oh. slowly filter out the bacteria. In fact, we may be able to use the transporter to do this if we could know what the frequency of the bacteria was. It would be slow because we would have to do it one at a time, but, but how, in theory. How would that prevent everybody from being reinfected as long as Bacchus stays on the ship? Give me a insight oh. medical role, Haskins. Uh, quick question. You go ahead and yeah. Um, I'm assuming not, but does Bacchus need to breathe? No. Uh, can I help him? Yes, please assist. Ooh, gonna help. Gonna help so much. <laughs> it's science, I... and I helped. <laughs> One success. Okay, so I rolled a two and a nine, oh, yeah. so that is three successes for me. Okay, I was gonna make. I should have said difficulty two, um, so that's a total of four successes, which is great. I'm gonna cap you guys up on momentum because um, this is more kind of like an idea roll. Okay, and um, I'm going to say that uh, while you guys are still disoriented uh, down there in Med Bay, uh, Keed has been studying the data from uh, Erax's blood and from the security officer uh, Trill, unjoined Trill's blood. And and uh, the word has been on the tip of your tongue this whole time, and it's just, it's it's been hard to kind of grasp onto it, but you get to a point and you're like, vaccine, we can, we can make a vaccine. Okay, so working on what Charlie has said, Mm -hmm. Commander, I think we could use the transporter to filter out the blood and then vaccinate them with some antibodies that would prevent a reinfection from happening and still would allow its children to live? It there might be some it, risk. What is this vaccine? Bacchus is, is not familiar with that term. Uh, essentially, it would make it so that we wouldn't be infected with your children, so the people who do not want to experience this will be able to not, and it will come for no harm for your children. Is that right, uh, Commander? Uh, I would say yes. Charlie, would you agree with that? Charlie's shrugging, but it's like, <laughs> it seems like it would work. 
It's a working theory, Commander, we have. There's no way to know until we start testing it. And in fact, I would suggest probably we would probably try it out on myself and Commander Charlie just to verify, because if it works, then we'll actually be able to function better. Uh, I would suggest and request that you try it on uh, someone else first, just in case there are unexpected consequences of this vaccine. So I believe Minkler, um, Minkler is still in the uh, med bay. Oh, Minkler. <laughs> uh, that Charlie's going to lean over and go, but there's a chance we could kill him. <laughs> that was a slow turn to look at Minkler, looks back at the doctor. <laughs> Normally, if you guys want to create that, a character like harm. Minkler that might accidentally die, uh, donate to the show. That's what happened last or, week. Or turn him inside out while two drunk individuals try to transport his blood. It'll work. It'll be fine. It'll be happens all the time. Fine. The transporter is great fine. at filtering blood. It'll be fine. It's fine. Worst case scenarios, we end up with two Minklers. Oh no. <laughs> You're right. The exploded the one and the burnt one. Sprinkler at that point. The Minkler double sprinkler. The one that's inside out, the one that won't stop screaming. <sighs> uh, Commander Shivrain, uh, give us... Uh, I, I need some time to try and replicate some antibodies and we may need some help configuring the transporter. Uh, I, Commander... Uh... We should get the stimulants to uh, Enbara and see if uh, she can help with the reconfiguring the transporter. Would it be possible to put uh, a Bacchus? Would you be okay going into one of our shuttles and have it pressurize? That should prevent any contact once we have figured out how to remove the viruses safely and we can then transport your children in there with you. Is it the same vessel that I arrived on? Yes. Uh, it is not, no. Uh, didn't they arrive on a probe? Yeah, but the probe yeah. was on the shuttle. Oh, okay. Because It was uh, on the shuttle, but he's he's referring specifically to okay. the probe. Oh, must okay. I return to the can or must I return to the glass? It was the, the bump on house. the log it was a bump on the frog on the log in the hole in the bottom of the sea. Yeah, exactly. No, we will not place you in that. In fact, we could place you in one of the runabouts that has more spacious interiors and replicators. He pauses and watches you and, for, a, for a moment. And also as a show of good faith, the, they are equipped with their own transporter decks. So you would not fear being trapped in them. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever used a transporter, but I'm willing I'm willing to agree to this as long as this is not an eradication. I promise you we are will do everything in our power. One of the key tenets of the Federation is that life is sacred. And we have made a terrible, terrible misservice to you and your people. I hope that we can find a way to... I know we can never make up for what we have done, but I hope that we can find a way to forge a path together forward. Uh, yeah, he, he... Bacchus agrees. Um... And uh, allows he follows you out of the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, again, he cannot. He has no control over. Like he can't like touch Halada and and make her return to normal. That is not at all anything that he has mm -hmm. the ability to do. Um, it is purely a response that he is a living, br uh, not breathing, but he is a living, walking virus that. Yeah. Um, has existed for a long time 
and mm -hmm. has, and he'll tell you this too. And you'll actually learn some of this from Zeke. Um, I, that, yeah, this is, he's just been around a long time and has learned how to mutate and grow and, uh, mimic. Mm -hmm. And I will even offer to show him how the transporter works since I've already been infected. Okay. He, uh, he is fascinated by this technology. Again, he's never really been uh, privy to uh, the areas, these types of areas on a ship himself. Uh, he has, his children have been there, um, but he has never been shown any of this himself. He usually does not get uh, on ship treatment that doesn't end in a fiery mass like uh, his time on a Klingon ship did. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, Rajan will you... accompany them to the runabout and everything while they're trying to figure out, you know, okay. getting everybody straightened and getting a vaccine. So he'll follow Commander Chevron and show him around the runabout and everything. Um, at this point, so you guys are going to transfer him or transport him onto one of the runabouts. Mm -hmm. um, let's go back to the science lab or to the med bay real quick. And let's go ahead and get a couple rolls on producing the on replicating the vaccine, and um, well, and those again can be assisted rolls. Um, let's do control medical on on that one, okay. uh, Commander Haskins. Uh, Rob, if you do not mind rolling for the ship to do, uh, uh, I'm trying to think what the departments are on the ship. Um, but it'll be another uh, medical role there to, we'll say computers medical. And then, uh, yeah, you can, Charlie, you can assist with either control medical or control science, whichever is better okay. for you. So I'm going to do control medical and then is Charlie going to do control science? Control so, science. Okay. And the way that we're going to do this is for the number of, uh, I'm going to treat this again. I'm going to try to do, this may not be the book by the book way to do a dramatic task or an extended task. We're just going to do it real fast. I am looking for a total of uh, five effects is what I'm looking for. So is what this is going to do for every success that you roll, I'm going to let you roll a D six effect dice. And for every effect rolled, I'm looking for six and we've got, I'm going to give us three rounds to get six effects um, to break through and get that, get that vaccine and be able to replicate it um, because you guys are dealing with the effects of the virus. Because I, of the virus. I got my one. I rolled yeah. two okay. of teens. I got yeah. if you, Okay. Yeah. If you guys can use momentum or anything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to. Yeah, of course. Like this. You can use momentum on any of these. <laughs> um, question. the time to do it. <laughs> I'm only rolling one because I'm assisting, right? Or do I get to roll two? You only get to roll one. The ship and yeah. Charlie only get to roll one dice apiece. Okay, I got one. The ship did not succeed. Oh, okay, so oh no. That's okay. Again, this is an extended extended task. So, Charlie, since you got one success, go ahead and roll one d6, and on a five or a six, we'll count at a... Uh, hopefully you get a five or a six. No, I rolled a six. Okay, fantastic. So let's go ahead and roll that same roll again. Okay. Can I buy? Can I use a determination? Sure. And then can I buy two dice? So a determination gives you an automatic two successes. Yep. yep. Uh, what uh, what value are you invoking? For determination. Yeah. So you to use your determination, mm -hmm. I believe you have to invoke one of your values. Yeah, um, when I did, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, either meticulous scrutiny or driven to ease suffering. Though, since we're not really suffering per se, I'm going to use the meticulous scrutiny. That works. Do either of you have a focus in virology? No, biology okay, that's is fine. biology for me. Xenobiology will still work, I'm going to say, because you are synthesizing this from trill blood. Um, okay. But yeah, so go ahead. So you bought two die, yep. two extra die. So that spent three momentum. And then uh, you spent one of your determinations. So you already have a, a base yep. two successes that you're working yep. from. 
So everybody roll that roll again, Rob for the computer, Charlie for an assistance and see how many successes we get. Um, um, I'm also testing a theory, um, okay. which is the theory of removing, you know, everything or removing sure, yeah. the, the virus. Um, so I get to roll an additional D20. Um, I know because I'm um, testing a theory that I've explored earlier in the same adventure. Yep. Yep. Uh, that works. I, I'll take it. I believe Rosrin has something to add. No, I'm just holding up how many successes. She's counting the successes oh. on our oh, okay. task. Excellent. So I've ended up with a total of six successes. I got Fantastic. one. Fantastic. So, so Charlie got two. I got two. The ship got got one and Keed got six. So go ahead, each of you roll that number of D sixes on fives and sixes. You get successes. So I got an effect. New. So we're all rolling no. two, four, six, eight, nine dice, or just what we got? No, you're only rolling the six that you were the, the okay. six successes that you got. I got one uh, on my okay. one die. I got a effect. Fantastic. I got none. Fives and sixes. Yeah. Nice. I'm so glad I spent all that. I ended up with four. I got two fives, two sixes. All right, that takes us to the six that I was looking for. So you are able to synthesize that uh, cool. that vaccine uh, from from you know studying the trill's blood, and yeah, you are able to replicate it. It takes maybe uh, an hour to replicate enough for the entire ship and crew. In that time, Bacchus is sent to be contained on the runabout. Um, through as as the captain and Zeke and the senior staff are all um, are all vaccinated, you know they you figure out this this trans uh, transporter blood filtration uh, operation that uh, allows the virus to be removed from those who wish it and those who wish to be vaccinated from it uh, uh, upon upon retransporting in. Um, but yeah, um, I don't think anybody agrees to go with Bacchus and this is very sad for him. Um, but it is understood that eventually the fever and the agitation and that the body cannot take it. Uh, he, and he is honest. He has yet to find a species that can, um, but he is always looking for one. Um, and the trill was a new, uh, interaction for him. Uh, you find out that he got the name Bacchus after spending some time with Zeke. Zeke got, um, very, uh, kind of got affected very quickly because they were in close proximity for an extended period of time. Um, and he kind of said, well, what do you, you know, what do you want to know? And Bacchus asked questions about the ship and Serenitis. And where did the term Serenitis come from? Oh, well, it comes from Greek mythology and it's this, this, and this. And so he spent some time with Greek mythology, determines that Bacchus is a god that very much embraces the types of things that he also embraces. Revelry, drunkenness, fun, living, merriment, things like that. And so he adopted that that name. And that is what he chooses to go by um, should you ever interact with him again, but he, um, you determined that yes, there were times in the past where his children, um, in earlier forms of his in earlier mutations infected, uh, planets like Psi 2000 and, uh, and interacted with the original enterprise and then also interacted with the enterprise D, um, when they were orbiting that collapsing star, um, and when he says recompense for your actions, he, you know, those times were serums that essentially eradicated what he calls his children. And he felt that that was a crime against his people. Uh, but you guys resolved it in a most diplomatic fashion that did not involve shooting him with phasers, which he appreciates. Um, and, uh, but yeah, that was the naked nowhere. Everybody, Tox has uh, barricaded himself in his room. Nobody ever went down to like lock him in. So anytime the door opened, he just fired a phaser, um, <laughs> you know, and Ambara dried her eyes and figured out how to get the ship going. Charlie down there helped a lot. Um, Halata returns to her normal 
uh, more relaxed self as, as first officer, still first officer, still in command, but is no longer, uh, you know, pacing around the bridge and refusing to let anyone get on it. Well, that would um, be the captain command back. Yeah. Um, captain Threx is appalled at his own behavior. He was having the time of his Denobulan life in the dappled doe, um, cavorting around with, uh, with the ship, with the crew. He learned a lot about a lot of people. Um, there, uh, you know, at some point somebody goes, wait a second. I thought we told the captain of the binary to come over and help with this. Well, you find out that Victor, uh, the con officer went to go pick up Marzan to, uh, cause they're old piloting buddies and, uh, they, uh, were flying back and they had, because the virus had been on the shuttle that she was using, she was also infected and Marzon got infected. And at the end, uh, when Captain Threx is asking where Captain Marzon is, Marzon emerges from uh, Lieutenant Hoth's quarters and uh, uh, is like, uh, I'm going to head back to the ship. So there was a whole, there was a whole <laughs> thing going on. The ship was one big bundle of debauchery, but that was the naked nowhere. I had a really good time tonight. I hope wow. you did too. Thank you, uh, Commander Chevrin, who is Rob, and Commander Charlie, John, Commander uh, Haskins, who is Sean, and uh, Lieutenant Irax. So, um, yeah, I hope you all had a good time, and thank you for joining us in chat. We went a little long. Yeah. I apologize. Follow us on all the social medias. We look forward to seeing you next Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, or on Thursday for Illuminated Page. And uh, thank you and good night. Night. Bye. Bye.